Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. JC Yeso McDonough here with the second part of our Microsoft Sunday tournaments. We've got Halo 5 2v2s. I'm joined by my friend Clutch as we're getting ready to break down all of the action in our winners' semifinals. Clutch, happy Sunday and welcome back. Yeah, it's good to be here. Uh, excited for some Halo 5. Got an opportunity to do some H2A yesterday and Halo 5 today. So Halo is back and it feels good. Definitely, definitely exciting. We actually had a little bit of a Halo to uh, H2A before this, running some uh, some 4v4s. That tournament was uh, fun and definitely uh, some nostalgia there, getting the classics out. So super exciting. But now we are on to Halo 5 here today and excited for some fun games. Uh, and starting off with a really fun matchup, we got Gold Star BR here against Outvade. Uh, these are a couple of players that we had our eyes on, uh, at least when I casted with you a couple of weeks back. Uh, you definitely had a lot of praise for Gold Star BR. And while he wasn't able to take first place in that bracket, still was very impressive. And we'll see what he can do again today. Yeah, uh, it's every week we've done this so far, I feel like Gold Star and Outbait have made it pretty far uh, separately, of course. And it's no surprise to kind of see them in this position once again. Um, it's great to see them back, and it's almost like a bit of a rivalry forming between a lot of these uh, up-and-coming amateur players. Yeah, and that's a cool thing, getting to track, you know, how things progress in these tournaments as players continue to come back and battle it out, as you do, as you mentioned, get those rivalries start to build. These players keep seeing each other, you know, at these late stages in the brackets, and if they're trading wins back and forth, these matchups are really built up, and, you know, hopefully uh, we get more of the same of that here today. Uh, we will have a, a bunch of matches for you folks here today, so make sure to stick around through all of the action. Do you just want to shout out a, a handful of things before we kick in to our first match of the day? Uh, and just starting uh, with us here at Esports Arena, if you guys are uh, interested and you want to follow what we're doing, see what's going on with everything Esports Arena, make sure to check us out on all of our social media platforms. We are at Esports Arena on Instagram and Twitter, facebook.com slash Esports Arena USA, and then make sure to head over to our awesome website over at esportsarena.com for all the information you could need for us. Uh, you can see more things about Series E. I had our CEO, Tyler Endress, on earlier talking about that. And if you want more information about that, make sure to head over to our website. You can also use exclamation point Series E in Twitch chat to get a direct link to that website. Uh, also, do want to shout out some of our sponsors uh, and the people supporting us here. Uh, obviously, Microsoft. I uh, do want to give away another 14-day free trial for Xbox Game Pass Ultimate today. So if you guys are interested in that, make sure uh, to stay active in the chat, and we'll give that away later in the day. And also, I would like to give out uh, a G Fuel starter pack. G Fuel, uh, one of the sponsors we are working with for Series E. We appreciate all of their support, so big shout-out to them uh, for having our back uh, with everything that is going on. We appreciate everything that they are doing for us, and we want to give back to you guys. Uh, so that is also something I want to give away later today. So again, be staying active in Twitch chat, checking out the broadcast, having some fun, and we'll give away one Microsoft Game Pass Ultimate 14 day free trial, as well as a G Fuel starter pack. So make sure to hang out for that. Uh, we're just waiting for, I believe, Gold Star BR's teammate to get in here, and then we'll be ready to go with this final uh, winner's bracket semifinal. Uh, the team waiting in the winner's finals is bound. And that was a, a, a team that we saw some impressive play out of. If memory serves, they did take the title two weeks ago uh, in Halo 5. And we definitely have a lot of high expectations for those guys who we'll get to see later in the night. It's always good for Bound. And I'm assuming Neptune is going to be yeah. his partner this week. Uh, it's always good to see that level of, of uh, professional play turn out and, and attend these kind of tournaments and see where some of these new up-and-coming amateurs kind of match up against them. And uh, th like you said, they won two weeks ago last week. They kind of had a, a poor performance against Renegade and Skeptify, 
and uh, Renegade and Skeptify actually got the better of them twice. So they're probably looking to kind of rebound and, and, and looking to put on a better performance this week, and they're already in the finals, like you said. So it's, uh, it's probably paying off pretty well for them. Definitely uh, high expectations for that squad, and we will get to see them later on in the broadcast. But we're about ready to kick things off here. Uh, Gold Star BR's teammate this week is Sab in the lobby now. So it will be Gold Star BR and Sab versus Fear, Tyranny, and Outvade. We're getting ready to kick things off here. It appears the first map will be Truth in these winner's bracket semifinals. And just about ready to get into the action. Uh, any points, uh, you know, from a map standpoint before we kick off the action? Uh, no, I think it's uh, it's good to see Sab um, kind of switch his teammates up from last week and and continue to compete in these as well. I know he didn't necessarily have the performance he wanted to last week, so it's good to see him kind of wanting to redeem himself as well. And it would be good to see him go against the likes of. Uh, Bound on Neptune if they're able to get there because Sab had a very successful Halo 5 career as well, I'd say. So um, it it's those kind of names that you recognize, but I think it's even more special when you see people like Tyranny and Outvade uh, compete against them and sometimes upset them. And, and that's what kind of these small tournaments are for, right? It's for the opportunity for some of these amateur players to to make a name for themselves and put on a great performance. All right, well, we will see if they can show their stuff. We are jumping into game now. 2v2 on Truth, ready to get going. We'll see what we got here. We'll start off on Gold Star BR here with his perspective. He's immediately going to try and claim that high ground, but gets blown up there. Tyranny able to secure the kill. Good coordinated fire there. It's a one-for-one -one trade as Sab is able to finish off Outfade. Yeah, great job by both teammates to kind of finish each other's kills there. And Sab ended up picking up the kill and control of Pink right here. And he's going to be trying to push Red here. And he spots both players on his screen. He's just going to overly challenge and somehow try to get out of there once it's a little bit too late. And he does end up going down. Uh, questionable decision right there, trying to take on like a 1v2. But um, Sab's the kind of player that can uh, come away with that with the trade at minimum. Uh, unfortunately for him, he didn't, and now it's resulted in a 2-1 uh, advantage for Tyranny and Outfit. 1v2 doesn't pan out, and so it is, as you mentioned, the 2v1 lead. Tyranny going to wait for those shields to come back up, and now we're all even as the push may come out from the red side. Tyranny going to try and uh, rotate a little bit here. High ground is grabbed by Cold Star BR, but... Oh, that's kind of the juke there. All right, Tyranny is gets up to the center. Behind them is Gold Star BR. He's gonna throw out a nade, isn't able to finish up until he's gonna back away as his shields are down, but he's taken out by Outfade. Yeah, great teamwork so far by our blue team, right? Uh Tyranny and Outfade showing some good bait and switches, staying alive when they need to, and then getting their kills. And they're up five to two right now, and that's um that's a good start going into these winter semis, right? You wanna start off hot, you especially uh, game one truth having no power weapons you want your teamwork to kind of shine and they're they're allowing it to do so Ooh, Switch it over to out mid perspective great headshot there to finish off the kill uh, Onto gold star BR growing that lead to four He's now controlling the high ground here trying to get some more shots Sab and gold star BR are gonna combine to take that kill onto outfit Gap closes to three, and it's now Tyranny on his own. Will he be patient and wait for the support of Outfade? We'll see. He's kind of trading shots. Both star BR is there. Sab. Now Tyranny goes for the push, and Outfade able to finish it off with the nade. Yeah, great nades by Outfade there. And Tyranny kind of would have been there to clean up the kill if Outfade didn't throw the great nade. But it shows uh, Tyranny's patience right there to, to wait for Outfade to spawn, and then Outfade's able to throw a couple nades and, and trade a few kills. They do end up both going down now, so this is a great opportunity for the red team to uh, to pick up a couple kills with the map control that they've gained. But uh, they're going to have to make up ground where they've lost it early on in this game. We're over um, a few minutes in now, and it looks like Outvade and, and Tyranny are, have found some pretty comfortable footing. Comfortable footing, but Outvade is going to go down. Finish on the kill by Gold Star BR. They're now just down by one kill as they take out uh, Tyranny there. So there's that gap being closed. 
And now just one kill separating the two teams. Now out of bait, playing patient. He heard Gold Star BR above him, and it's going to go for the chase. Actually able to finish it off with the grenade. Good job there from out of bait. The deficit is now two once again. Yeah, big kill by Outvade right there um, on the Gold Star, but it's more important that they're able to find Sab before Gold Star is able to spawn, and it looks like they are just able to do so. So now they've got their lead back up to three, and they're fighting a bunch of 2v1 situations. Uh, fortunately, Gold Star is able to kind of separate the two and, and pick up a kill and a nice stick, so he's going to go two for one. But they keep extending this lead whenever it gets to one or two. Tyranny and Outvade have done a good job so far of uh, extending that lead to three or four to where they have that comfortable lead to play with when they do end up getting 1v2'd by, by a great play from Gold Star or Set. Yeah, at the very least, Tyranny and Outvade are consistently kind of being able to maintain that lead and continue to force uh, those 1v2s. And that's actually huge there. Tyranny in the 1v2 gets two kills before going down. So that's huge to keep that gap at two kills oh great nade there outvade losing his shield has to back away from trouble as he and tyranny will now combine to try and uh, get the push on the sab and gold star we can switch over to sab's perspective now solid start for him needs to get a few more kills but four kills for the game so far as he's gonna go down yeah, it's interesting. It's like whenever the map slows down and, and they get into a little bit of a stalemate with dead time, I feel like Tyranny and Outbait have been coming out on top a majority of that time. It's when um, Goldstar and Sab have been able to create a lot of pressure and, and press the attack that you see them kind of get their kills going in their way. But once again, we saw the map kind of get into a stalemate for just a little bit and Tyranny and Outbait came away with two free kills. Now they're flying a Sab right now. And now that it's a little hectic, you see Gold Star VR pick up a couple of kills, but it's really interesting to see how successful Tyranny and Outbait are when, they, when they're playing it slow and they're able to kind of dissect what Sav and Gold Star VR. That speaks volumes to me because it shows that Sav and Gold Star might have a lot of individual skill, but they might not necessarily have the same teamwork that Tyranny and Outbait have so far in this game one. And they're continuing to build on this lead while Sav is able to get one kill back. The deficit is now at three and... Now, Vade and Tyranny going to look to build on that even more. Both Star are actually able to take out Tyranny there. That's huge to not let this gap get out of control. The score limit being at 25. There isn't a ton of time to close the gap here. Now, Vade looking to buy some time. He's waiting for his teammate. A lot of damage there on the Sab, and Gold Star BR is going to go down to Tyranny. Now, Outfade looking for the push, but Sab able to finish him off. Yeah, interesting challenge by uh, Outvade right there. It looks like he had every opportunity that he wanted to to kind of stay alive, but uh, his ego kind of got the best of him, and then Sab followed through with the kill. And instead of a three-kill lead, you now only have a two-kill lead. So um, you're still in the lead, but it's interesting decisions like that and a little bit of ego challenges that can make this game a lot closer than it needs to be. Continues to hold at 18 to 16. Sab looking for something. Tyranny able to take out Gold Star PR and Outvade now trying to fire onto Sab from the low ground. Sab gonna dash away from trouble. That's a plasma grenade, grenade up near him. Duking it out with Tyranny. Tyranny gonna be able to help secure the kills. Outvade continues to be clean with these grenades. Yeah, super sloppy fight right there, but luckily for Outvade, his team came out on top somehow. Now they, they're up four, they're playing to 25, I think. This game's going exactly how you want to if you're a Tyranny and now Bay fan. They should be feeling very confident right now as lots of grenades down towards Sab. We can head over and check out Tyranny's POV now as Sab trying to get some shots on him. It is going to take Tyranny down. That's huge. Gap back down to two. It's going to be need to be a, a very strong push here from the red team if they want to turn this game around as Outfade's going to take out Sab and things starting to look very very scary yeah that was a, a big opportunity for sab and gold star missed because sab and gold star both knew where um tyranny was in the window but they were unable to kind of kill him and he was able to juke enough and and stay alive long enough to, in order to get a kill himself and actually stay alive and play his life uh i, I call that a little bit of a blunder by gold star br and sab but and there's not a, a lot of room for error here left uh, having three kills to go for our blue team. It's going to be um, super close at the end, but every single one of these kills counts, so you got to take advantage of them when you can get them. Certainly 
So three points to a win. Three points separating these teams. Sab getting a kill onto Tyranny. That's huge. Still not a lot of space to work. The margin of error is so slim right now, and Sab and Gold Star VR really need their teamwork to be on point if they want to win this game. Tyranny maybe going to look for a flank here as Alphade trying to be patient. Grenade is not going to get over to Gold Star VR there. 20 stab shots on to Outfit. Tyranny now looking for push. He's on the high ground. He's trying to get in behind the red team. Sab is down. Gold Star VR as well. That's the two, the 1v2 for Outfit grabbing two kills. Huge. Just one more kill will finish off this game. Dude, that was a great play by Outfit to push the bubble and, and catch Seb. Sabinator off guard, right? I think that Sabinator thought there's no way this guy pushes the bubble. He's going to just play for control top middle, and instead Outbait kind of outplays him. Ends up picking up two kills in a row, which only gives one kill to go for the blue team to close this game one out and go up 1-0 in the series. Outbait may be looking to push right now, so we're going to swap over to his perspective. He's rotating down. Sab going to try and get out of trouble. That's a grenade into a low room. High ground now picked up by the blue side. Sap trying to run for cover. Shields have regenerated. Shields down towards Gold Star VR. He's running for his life. He's trying to get away. Can he do it? No, he won't. Tyranny going to finish off the kill. Gold Star VR goes down, and that is the win in game one. Yeah, super impressive uh, game one performance by Outfit and Tyranny, right? They smelled blood in the water there at the end, and, and they were able to close it out exactly how they wanted um, great show of teamwork, and it looks like the assists were going to be the difference maker in taking a look at the score. Um, just doing quick math, 13 assists, 11 assists. They won by three. They had two more assists. So those probably made a big difference in, in picking up each other's kills and capitalizing on each other's damage. It was a great job by Outbite and, Outbite and Tyranny uh, to start the series off. Yep, and you know, it's really no surprise there with how close the game ended up being that, you know, those those assists are what decides the game. And so great performance there. We'll have to see if they can uh, continue that. There we go. Now I can switch to Observer. There we go. All right, well, preparing for game two, we're going to be heading to, it looks like, Regret will be the map here if things stay as they are. Clutch and I will swap over to Observers and get ready for the next one, but that is the lead now for Outvade and Tyranny. Sab and Gold Star BR need to get a win in this next game if they want to uh, stay on the winner's bracket and if they want that date with Bound in the winner's finals. And we are ready to go. We're already loading back into game. No rest between sets, ladies and gentlemen. The action will continue. Yeah, super interesting set of uh, game types. Uh, I guess maps um, to to start the semifinals off, right? You have truth, and you go immediately to regret, and they kind of play very similar. Um, there is an overshield on regret, which is going to change up a little bit of um, strategy that goes into it, but not really too many power weapons. Not many. Uh, the they're both circular. They're both. Um, pretty straightforward and, and typically played very similarly so i expect to see similar play styles amongst both teams but how would they overshoot and bad so we gotta find out we'll find out as the early battle is over the overshield but two kills for the red side will give them lead control of the overshield and that is a great start there yeah that's exactly how sab and, and gold star kind of want to rebound after game one right they want to Make sure that if they don't get the overshield, they're able to get the kills and, and get the overshield burn, and that's exactly what they do. Uh, phenomenal shots by both players to kind of win their one-on-ones individually. And, and that's what you kind of expect from these players in Gold Star and Sab. You expect them to have tons of individual skill and, and to win their 1v1s. Unfortunately, at the break of the game, they were able to kind of isolate each other um, and the other team into two separate one-on-ones, which they both came out on top. And because of that, they've been able to kind of Snowball that into this 4-1 lead we're looking at. Yeah, great control early. They continue to dominate as they make it a fifth kill to start things off. It's really, Tyranny and Outbid uh, heavily on the back foot right now as Sab and Gold Star VR continue to control things. Tyranny is going to go down once more. Outvade finally gets a second kill here. 
is his first of the game. So Alphide now on the board. We can swap over to Gold Star BR's perspective as Sab is able to take out Alphide. And Gold Star BR now getting the flank on a Tyranny tier. And he's in trouble. He's trying to run, but he will not escape. Gold Star able to grab another kill. Yeah, and this is a great job by Red Team, right? To, to continue the, the snowball and the pressure that they've built after the very start of the game. It's 9-2 to two right now, and, it, and they're not really giving any room for tyranny and outbait to, to breathe. They're not letting them get set up and slow the game down. They're gonna try and force as much pressure onto these players and create these one-on-ones that they've been so often in this game too. You know, we talked kind of throughout the first game about how tyranny and outbait had really had a lot of control and while Sab and Goldstar were able to keep the score close throughout, it really never felt like they were able to get the upper hand. Things have totally shifted here in game two as they look much cleaner. Goldstar BR will lose that trade in the 1v2, but they still have a seven kill lead right now, so they're feeling very comfortable after the first two and a half minutes of this match. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, up 11 to four in a game to 25. Um, you'd have to mess up pretty bad to kind of lose this lead. Uh, and lose this game too, and it doesn't look like they have any intention of doing so because they want to go to a game three in the winner's semis. Um, so they've been able to spot this player top mid. Sab is going to end up pushing him with the overshield and pick up that kill, and now they got their mindset on this player bottom blue as well, and Sab is going to take him out as well. And when it rains, it pours, and when the pressure's on, um, it it starts to heat up, and, and it doesn't look like our blue team really has any answer for for getting back into this game, especially competing against an overshot Sab, and al along with the uh, Gold Star BR having map control right now, it it's Sab getting another five, uh, perfect kill, and and just continuing the snowball to roll downhill. If you guys had noticed from the gameplay we've been watching, Sab is popping off right now. Ten kills, two assists. Three deaths. He is looking super clean right now. Gold Star VR, meanwhile, four kills, four assists, and three deaths. So, uh, certainly uh, a lot of coordination from these two. The team fire is looking great, and uh, Sab having a great bounce back game after uh, a rough one to start off the series. Yeah, and, and that's kind of what you expect from some of these players that have competed um, in the biggest tournaments in the world and, and have, have had success, right? You expect them to be able to weather whatever storm's thrown at them, uh, rebound after a loss, strong, and, and that's what we're seeing here in game two. I don't think that anyone thought that they would just be pushed over and that they would just roll over and let Outvade and Tyranny kind of run away with this, but it's going to be interesting to watch how Outvade and Tyranny kind of respond to a performance like this in game two, uh, seeing if this series does go to a game two. One thing to note, the momentum being slowed down at least a little bit. Eight kills now for the blue side. Still a nine kill lead for the side of Sab and Gold Star BR. And they get 10 there with that beat down by Sab. Blue is certainly on the board here, but they're really going to need to get a mess of kills here in the next couple of minutes if they want to turn this around. That first one there for Alphid. Certainly going to go the wrong way. Dropping in behind the tyranny. Now we can head over to Help Fade's perspective. Leading in kills for his team with six. Needs to get things moving. Getting some shots onto Goldstar. Goldstar going to try and run by a little bit of space. The gap closed down now to seven. 18 to 11 in favor of the red team. Yeah, and a great couple of uh, rotational kills right there from Tyranny and Outbay showing that game one wasn't a fluke, but it might be too little too late, right? It's an eight kill game, they're playing to 25, so Red Team only needs six, and they're just really looking to trade kills from here on out if they're able to do so. But Tyranny and Outbay have done a, a solid little job here in the past minute of picking up some, some very important kills and making this game a little bit closer. Any kill trades are great for the blue team, but they aren't going to get it there. They get knocked out. Two kills there for Sab, looking very, very good. 21 to 11 as the gap opened back up to 10 kills. Sab going to back away as Alphabet is looking at a couple of shots right off of his spawn. He's going to drop some nades on top of the red player, and Sab may go for the challenge. He jumps over the wall, he gets a couple of shots from Alphabet's pistol. And Alfie gets just shot in the back. Sab able to finish off the kill. It's up to 23 now. 
Yeah, you can tell how confident Zach's playing right now. Uh, and this is a, a different level of confidence than we saw in game one, and rightfully so, because the score is 24 to 12 right now. Uh, just incredible performance. They've gotten every overshoot other than the one that was burned at the beginning. Alve gonna just try and get this game over with and get on the game three as he decides to just sit there and crash as he shoots that. And a, a great rebound game from the red team right there. I think that uh, I kind of expected this game to go to game three and looking forward to seeing like what map it is and, and how these teams are going to play a little bit different style of a map um, that we haven't had a chance to see in this series yet. 19 kills, four assists, six deaths for Sab. That is one of the best single game performances we've seen in these tournaments. That was very, very impressive. Sab really uh, taking the initiative in that game. And, you know, Gold Star VR still had a solid game, but uh, Sab was certainly wearing the carry pants that time around. Yeah, when you're feeling it uh, and you're on, there's no reason not to kind of press the matter and to take the game into your own hands, especially being down in the series. You know, Sab wanted to kind of make a statement and, and get his confidence on the right foot for this game three. And I think he did a great job in doing so. Um, it's now up to Sab and Gold Star to kind of decide how this game's going to be played, right? Do they want to play with the same speed and pace that they played game two with? Do they want to kind of slow it down and and play around the snipe that's on Plaza? That's something that I'm looking forward to seeing. We will find out. We are into game, the final round of this best of three in the loser or in the winners, excuse me, semifinals. Sam and Gold Star VR trying to string together two wins in a row. Meanwhile, Tyranny and Alpha are going to see if they can slow down a red hot red team. Looked very strong in that last game. Is this? Uh, maybe this is a practice round. Because Alphade was just shooting at a wall. Alphade just gets lasered there by Sab, who is able to grab the sniper. We're going to hop over and check out Sab's perspective. He does have that sniper. Nope, looks like this is uh, this is the real deal. Not sure what happened with Alphade at the start of the round, but it is a 4-0 lead for the red side. Yeah, it does look like there is uh, something mutually okay. going on between the two. There is going to uh, be a restart to this game. Uh, that's fortunate for the blue team because it may have been <laughs> difficulties, it may have been whatever, but um, no matter what, it looks like the red team has decided to do a replay. So whatever was going on, hopefully they're able to fix pretty quickly and we're able to get back into this game three. Yeah, that was looking a little weird at the start. I was like, is, is that just the forfeit? Like, what's going on here? Outvid just standing out in the middle. Uh, but we're good to go. Looks like we will still be on Plaza. Hopefully both teams are ready to go. We can get right back into the action here. Won't have to wait too long. Oh. And hey, why not take the opportunity, everybody who has been active in chat, I do want to give away a 14-day free trial for Microsoft Game Pass Ultimate. So let's hit, let's roll it, see who wins FBI underscore Tugboat. Thanks for coming to hang out and checking out the stream. You have won a code for a free 14-day free trial of Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. Uh, just keep an eye out for a whisper. I will send you one from my personal Twitch account here uh, in just a moment. And I'll send you that code. Thanks for coming to chill. Hope you enjoy Game Pass Ultimate. And I'm going to send that whisper to you right now as we get ready to get into the last game of this semifinal. There we go. Tugboat. There's your code. Boom. Just please, uh, when you get the code, please make sure to uh, just shoot me a message back to confirm that you got it. Okay, we're good to go there. And hopefully ready to go. Do another one. All right, I'll do another one. Okay. Yeah, I think I got another code that's good to go. I didn't win rigged. <laughs> it's not rigged. I just I just roll a random one for the people that are uh people that are in the channel. 
I have no control. You just got us 14 days worth away from him. Yeah. Just like that. Yeah. I'll do another one after this game, folks, okay? I think I got another code that's good. All right, but we are into it. Plaza for real this time. This one's for keeps. And we'll see. Uh, obviously, the big thing at the start of every Plaza match is control of the first overshield and control of that sniper. And that's going to be an immediate rush from Outfade. He's able to grab it, but he goes down right away. Good coordination from the red side, and that kill goes to Sab. Yeah, just like Regret, um, Sab and Ghostar do a good job of making sure the overshield at the start gets burned. And they built uh, that 1-0 lead, and it looks like they're going to be going for the sniper. Uh, good job by Outfade to get right off his spawn and kind of help his teammate Tyranny uh, fight for the sniper as, as we see him pick up a kill on his own. Perfect kill on the sap from Tyranny off screen, and that was just a phenomenal job right there to uh, to kind of win a 1v2 as Outfade was ending up spawning across the map. But it does look like the snipe has gone in the hands of Tyranny, and that's going to be the player we want to watch until he gets assassinated by Sab. And now the power weapon in the hands of Goldstar, BR, and Sab. All right, well, let's see what Sab can do with it. His shields are broken there, but he's able to back away from trouble. He's still looking for another shot with this sniper. He tries to get the flick there, and is it able to land it? We're tied 2-2-2 two, two, two at 2 apiece. Let's go for that instead of 2-2. Two, two. Uh, Sab going to back away here. Still looking for something with the sniper. Hasn't been able to... The kill yet. Always gonna spot out Tyranny there, but misses with the no scope. Gonna find Outfade. Doesn't play into that one either. Now being able to back win, he's gonna get taken out. So Sab not able to do anything with the sniper there, and it's back in the hands of Tyranny. Yeah, great job so far uh, by Tyranny at the start of this game, picking up some very important kills and finding himself with the sniper and a two kill lead. What kind of damage is he gonna be able to do? Because this is not a player I'm familiar with, um, in all honesty, and I'm, I'm excited to see what kind of a, a player he is and how individually skilled is he unfortunately for him he only has one bullet to to make it count with the sniper right here but he can do it with this pistol as well as we've seen so far in this series yeah he looks very strong in game one we'll see if he can get another good performance here good damage there on a gold star br but he's just able to back away before he is finished off and Tierney, look at this shot. He's on top of Sab. He actually doesn't realize he's there. Sab goes up high, able to finish off the kill. Gold Star BR takes that one. Yeah, big blunder by Tyranny and Outfade right there. And because of it, they're punished going 0 for 2 and unable to trade either one of the kills. Uh, Sab and Gold Star rebounding very well right there, right? I think that that's uh, a, a great start to their game three after. Uh, what looked like was an opportunity for Tyranny and Alpha to kind of run away like they did with game one. Try to do it. There is the three kill lead. Good job from Sab to take out Tyranny there. And again, the full wipe on the blue squad. It's three points ahead. Arkadir and Tyranny. Two seconds on the sniper. One second. It has respawned. Which means overshield is available once again, I believe. Sniper not able to land that shot, missing with the second one as well. Nobody looked great with this sniper so far in this game. Not really a lot of work getting done here. Sab in trouble, taking some shots, and that's Tyranny able to finally take a kill there. Yeah, Tyranny being the last man standing on the map right there, and that's a great job by Alvade and Tyranny to, to make sure the damage to the sniper wasn't done against them. And now Tyranny Ooh. ripping a face. On the player right, <laughs> right rifle right there, and that's gonna make this a, just a one-score game. Tyranny doing a good job so far, continuing his hot start. Now he's found himself with the sniper. Does miss gold star VR right there, uh, just by an inch. But um, it, it'll be very interesting to see how they play this this next overshot that'll be coming up here in 15 seconds. There you go, overshield up in 15 seconds. Here, trying to get some eyes on that upper catwalk. Gonna go for a bit. Okay, push see if he can get some information here. He's actually gonna get right up behind him, and that's the melee. Looking for the second kill. Sab's in trouble. He's gonna get a melee himself, but it's the double kill there. Tyranny goes down to the plasma grenade, but he still trades two for one. Yeah, and more importantly, Outfight's gonna now pick up that overshield and immediately run into yard and try and probably pick up that plasma pistol to where there's no hard counter for this overshield. And now, 
Tyranny and Outvade have the luxury of kind of pushing with no regards of, of the damage that's coming at them because of this overshield. Yeah. Tyranny's going to rip Savinator's face off, <laughs> off screen over Outvade's shoulder, as you see. And Outvade knows that there's a player hiding somewhere in this blue area. Unfortunately for Goldstar, he's unable to land a stick. And now Outvade and Tyranny have taken the lead again here in game three. He's got a little bit of, of his overshield left. More importantly, Tyranny still has his snipe. And the control is still in their favor. Dang, it was looking early. Like Sab and Goldstar were ready to run away with this third game, but Tyranny and Outfade have slowed it down. And thanks to their great control of the sniper, and Tyranny is finally uh, really settling in, getting some great shots. That's another kill there. The snipe punch and able to finish that one off. And now that's a three kill lead for the blue side. Yeah, great job by our blue team to kind of answer the 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 deficit that they found themselves in earlier in this game, and this is phenomenal uh, just map movement right now by Outfade. And we saw him make that play before the overshield, very similar to that jump we just witnessed right there to get top middle and pick up that earlier double. But I mean, we're seeing a lot of a lot of great plays from Tyranny and Outfade in this series, and it's showing that their individual skill and their ability in, uh, to traverse the map it, is that of the levels of Sabinator and Goldstar, which speaks a lot because those are two very individually skilled players in Halo 5. So for them to be able to compete, they're kind of making their own names for themselves here today. Definitely good to see the more of these top competitors we have, the more fun it is to watch the ends of these tracks. It really gets interesting. And the more, you know, the more matchups I go into where I go, dang, I actually don't know who can win this. I don't know, both of these teams are really strong. The more fun it is. And that's Tyranny going down there too. Gold Star VR, we can check in. It's a big carry performance here for Tyranny. 11 of the 15 kills for the blue side there for Tyranny. Granted, five assists for Outfade, so he's doing his part. Gold Star VR, we want eight kills, make it nine red team and we can head over to gold star vr's perspective as he's looking to try and chase down tyranny sab is going to secure the kill and now they're on the hunt for outfade before the respawn comes through yeah it's looking like this is going to go down to the wire 15 to 15 five minutes left in the game game three of the series uh that overshield that they allowed goes gold star to pick up right there was massive because they were able to string it into about three kills that were unanswered and the lead that tyranny and outfade built for themselves has now been lost and they're going to have to rebound, right? You're going to have to stop this momentum that we've seen Stab and Goldstar gain and run away with in other games uh, and, and figure out a way to, to build that comfortable 2-3 kill lead up once again. And this is a great opportunity to have both players stuck in yard. Outfade does get knocked to no shield and is going to try and turn the corner as Tyranny perfects Stab, uh, who is shooting Outfade in the back there. So that's great teamwork by our blue team to pick up a kill there. Outfade doing a phenomenal job of somehow staying alive through all this chaos. One kill lead now for the blue side, and they're able to regroup here. Tyranny gonna need this kill on a gold star BR if they want to continue to throw this lead. Gold star BR is gonna go down. Outfade able to finish that one off as we hop on board with him. He actually goes down just after, so it's still only a one kill lead as Outfade respawns. He and Tyranny gonna need to move back up and see if they can get this going again as Sab with the high ground. Able to get some good shots on Outfade. His shield's broken, but he can buy some time here. Now looking for the aggressive push before his shields even regenerate, but he had Tyranny's backup, and now they're closing in on Gold Star VR. That's another kill for Outfade. A huge performance here as he's coming alive in the late stages of this game. Yeah, a great job by Tyranny and Outfade to make sure the Savinator uh, burn that camo and they're able to pick up the kill and then immediately focus on to Gold Star where they're able to get a few kills string together to build a three kill lead. Sad does come off spawn and take out Outbade to narrow it down to two with just three minutes left. But Outbade needs to do his, his best to get off spawn and immediately go to help Tyranny because both Sab and Goldstar are focused on him. Oh, here comes the aggressive push from Goldstar VR. He is up above Outbade. Outbade gets a shot or two off, but not able to finish that kill. Still two kills separating these teams. Sab, meanwhile, backing away behind cover. Red team being 
very patient even despite the deficit. I think they're feeling pretty confident here that they don't necessarily have to rush it. Now they're looking for the two-man push. That's a kill for Outvade, but a trade back as Sab takes out Tyranny. One for one, the gap remains at two. Yeah, I'm going to focus all my attention on Sab right now because he's got the sniper in his hands. He's got five bullets. He's down two. And it's really his responsibility to kind of try and make a play here, right? You want to see him be able to pick off a player and, and, and tie this game up potentially uh, with his teammate up. Uh, being able to focus on the second one, but it doesn't look like Sab is going to have a good angle on either player for Blue with the outlines that we see. We do see Nate almost peeking the corner that Sab is staring at. Now Sab kind of looking for any bit of information he can find, but it doesn't seem like any player on the Blue team is going to going to give him that information that he's really searching for, and, and because of that, it's going to make this game a lot more tense when this next overshot is coming up here in about 10 seconds. Oh, great grenade there from Gold Star VR to take out Outfit as the gap remains now at one. And it really is starting to feel like how Sab can perform with this sniper may determine the game here. Overshield picked up a use by Sab, and now he's looking for the push. Yeah, Sabinator picking up that overshot after the kill from Alvay, and that was such an untimely death. Tie game. To our blue team because overshot was coming up immediately, and now red team not only has tied the game, they've taken the lead up one kill with a minute left, and they have sniped. Sab has spotted a player in Nest, and I love this play by Sab. He's going to be aggressive with the rest of his overshield still, and end up building this lead to two. They know where the third player is right here. They're going to take him out as well. Sab oh, staying alive as well, and there's a minute left. You're up three. You really have to mess up to kind of lose this game. This is a phenomenal comeback by our red team right now. Huge swing for Sab and Gold Star PR. The sniper doing so much work. It's able to get that shot, but not the kill quite yet for Sab. Still the three kill lead. 38 seconds left. Tries to get out that final shot. Isn't going to land another sniper. Is out of play. Tyranny going to be able to avoid. That is out Vave getting in behind Sab. And now it's two kills separating them. Make it one huge kill for Tyranny. And now 20 four seconds left down to the wire yeah somehow tyranny stays alive through all that chaos 15 seconds they've got a spot where sab and ghost are spawning and they've got to push immediately they do find a player by the middle and outbade's able to tie it up with 10 seconds left do they know where this red player is he's by himself and it does not look like they're going to be able to get there in time and pick up this kill but try as they might they're flying oh it. no he got it wait at the very end outbade oh at the last possible second, it was tied. Outvade wins the 1v1, takes out Sab, and that means they will move on to the winner's finals. Yeah. Unbelievable. Un unbelievable just, like, last minute and a half from, from Sab and Goldstar picking up that last overshield and getting three straight unanswered kills to, to take the lead and then um tyranny doing an unbelievable job staying alive top dip and then they they're able to just find the spawns and and pressure them to the point where they're able to pick up the kills without trading anyone's life i mean that was pretty much perfect table for the last minute from tyranny and outvade and and well-deserved victory goes to them with one kill with one second on the clock crazy finish there and we mentioned earlier that it was really uh uh tyranny that was kind of you know carrying to an extent the first half of that match right there were some great assists on outfade's side but in terms of the kill numbers it was heavily in favor of tyranny but outfade really came in clutch in the back half of that match obviously the most clutch kill finishing it off with the last second takeout of sab there so what a an impressive finish a fun match to watch there uh and that that was a good one uh real quick i'm gonna give away here uh, one more of these codes for a 14-day free trial for Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. So let me hit the, uh, where's my, where's Nightbot? There we go. Let's roll it one more time. What do we got? Sparzix. There we go. All right, Sparzix, keep an eye out for a uh, whisper with your code on Twitch. I'll send it to you here in just a moment. Uh, so while I do that, we are going to head to a short break, but stick with us, folks. We got more Halo 5 action when we return.
<clears throat> no rest for the weary ladies and gentlemen. Yeso and Clutch here as we are back with the winners finals in our Halo 5 2v2 bracket. We got Bound and Neptune here going up against Tyranny and Outvade, who we just saw with a huge comeback performance to take that win in the winners semifinals. And now they've got to go against the Bending champ. I don't know if Bound and Neptune won last week, but they last time I they did not. they were the champions. So still yeah, they, big food, big food. Yeah, they actually got uh upset pretty early last early. week from, okay. from Renegade and, and Skeptify and then lost to Renegade and Skeptify once again in the losers bracket. But um fortunately for them, it doesn't look like Renegade or Skeptify is in this tournament. And uh the last time that Renegade and Skeptify didn't knock them out, they were winners and you captured that series and it looks like they're kind of off to the same start that the last time we casted this team, uh, they were on, right? I think the Bound and, and Neptune are are out for blood, and they want the they want their belt back. I'll say so. They're off to a hot start, five to three, and it looks like this is a much fast, much more fast-paced game than the the last series we just watched. And I expect that kind of out of Bound and Neptune because they're just they're just so fast as players, and they're able to traverse the map. Uh, in several different ways that other players almost don't know how yet. So, um, it, they're definitely going to be up a couple legs when, when it comes to traversing the map as quickly as possible and, and maneuvering around it um, as quick. But so far, Tyranny and Outvade not getting blown out, uh, picking up some, some very important kills and limiting the amount of damage that Bound and Neptune have been able to do so far in this game. And it being a two-kill game, a huge... Win for Neptune right there. You want Outvade to win that and make it a one kill game, but unfortunately for him, he's not able to. And now, because of that, Tyranny's going to end up finding himself in a 1v2. Does land a stick, and the lead is up to three, but a good job by Tyranny to trade that kill right there. Yeah, able to get one back. Just checked. Skeptify actually was in the bracket today. Got knocked out of the winner's bracket in the quarterfinals by Gold Star BR, and then went down and lost his loser's bracket match. So there will be, uh, you know, there's no boogeyman waiting in the loser's bracket to come up and get next to the end of bound. So one team that's been able to take them out is not in the bracket any longer here. And now it's eight to eight, actually. Tyranny and Outvade able to bring things back as I'm on board right now with Neptune, trying to see what he can do, trying to escape a bit of a collapse there, but is able to get out of trouble for now and wait for his team. Yeah, a uh, phenomenal job. And Neptune going to win a another major one-on-one -on -one and continue their lead. Uh, but for a second there, Tyranny and Outvade did have an opportunity to kind of tie this game up. And as long as they're within... Uh, like winning distance or like as long as the game is close and they give them up themselves an opportunity we've seen that they have that little bit of clutch factor in them to be able to close it out at the last second like they did last series uh but these are two different beasts we're talking about the difference in teams between gold star br and the difference between neptune so uh it's going to be much more difficult for them to kind of keep this game close and make it even available to have a, a clutch play at the end Right. Well, it is a 12 to 9 lead right now for Bound and Neptune as they've, as they've uh, regained control. They increased the lead to 4. Outvade in trouble now, running away from Neptune. Is able to escape without going down, but still did take a lot of damage. The nades raining in there onto Outvade, but it's not going to finish the kill quite yet. Yes, Bound just goes down there. They finally get their man. And now with the plasma pistol, looking to chase. Neptune is actually going to get lasered there by Tyranny, able to finish off the kill, and the gap remains at two. Yeah, Bound and Neptune's kind of sync was a little bit off right there, and because of it, they pushed one at a time, and they were taken down one at a time by some great teamwork from Tyranny and Outbade to stay alive and, and work with each other and capitalize on each other's damage, making this just a two-score game. Tyranny and Outbade have done a, a phenomenal job so far of being on the broadcast and showing that they have great teamwork and uh, the ability to stay alive. But right now, Tyranny's going to find himself with both players shooting at him and both players getting knocked down to no shield, but both players picking up a kill for themselves. And this leads back up to four. Great, uh, great push from Bound and Neptune to, to kind of resync after that blunder of uh, push to red and, and pick up two straight kills and use a little bit of teamwork themselves. Definitely looking good here. Gonna swap over to check out what Bound has got going on. He's looking to try and chase down Outvade. He's now right up above Tyranny 
here gets two shots away. His shields are out. He gets taken down. It's the trade, though. He's able to take it out to Tyranny. So one for one, and the lead remains at four. We'll see if they can keep this momentum going. High ground is picked up by Tyranny and Outfit. Flank trying to come out from bound. As he fires across the map. Trying to get up here to get after Outfit. Couple of good shots. Hiding behind the shields, and Neptune with the assist. Able to finish off the kill. Now up to 19 kills. Make it yeah, 20. Seeing that from Outbase's point of view, he was very confused as to where both players of Bound and Neptune were, and that's very common for, for players to have that kind of trouble against the caliber of players like Bound and Neptune. With the speed that they play at, it's it's difficult to keep track of where they are at all times on the map, and unfortunately for Outbase, that was a very important opportunity because uh, having been only down four right there, the game was still in reach, but now they've been able to extend this lead to seven, make it eight if they're able to finish this kill bottom middle. Oh, and man. And, and now this nine kill lead is going to be almost too insurmountable of, of a task to ask anybody, let alone Tyranny and Outbait, to come back in this game one. This is a lot of what we saw from Bound and Neptune two weeks ago, where it really felt like, you know, the first few minutes of the game, it'd be really tight, you know, maybe only a kill or two separating the teams, and then you really get into the meat, into the middle of that match, and they just start to run away with it, and they really have here. Nine kill lead right now, they're looking extremely strong, continuing to get the 2v1s that they really want to secure these kills, and now they're just within spitting distance of a win in game one. Yeah, I mean, it was super close throughout the majority of this game, but you give Bound and Neptune an inch and they take a mile, right? And with that mile, they're going to take game one by 11 kills and what was once a close game ends up being quite a blowout on a map with no power weapons. It, it does not bode well for Tyranny and Outbait's future. Uh, come a map with Overshield and Snipe probably coming up next um, and, and seeing the likes of Neptune and Bound on the other side of that sniper. Things looking very good there. Truth goes to Neptune and Bound, a 25 to 14 win. Both of them looking really good. Bound with 11 kills and nine assists. That's a huge performance. A part of 20 out of 25 kills there. Bound with an impressive game there as we get set up for game two of this series. Uh, they'll allow observers here in just a moment, and then we will get things rolling yeah having an opportunity to look at those stats um it does look like they backed it out into the menu for just a second um having an opportunity to look at those stats it's volumes to me looking at outbait and tyranny's um assists because something that i think that they did so well against gold star uh last series um was their teamwork and, and their bait and switches and their ability to stay alive and capitalize on each other's damage and uh, that past game, Tyranny had seven assists, Outvade had zero. Um, and, and although Tyranny only had um, four kills, I mean, you could just tell in the stats that they weren't working well enough with each other to beat the likes of Bound and Neptune. It's going to take a lot more teamwork in game two uh, for them to kind of come away with a, a win in a series like uh, the one that they're currently in. If you want to win the finals, you, you got to bring your A game. And unfortunately for them, game one was not uh, the best that we've seen them play so far today. Alvade Tyranny definitely going to have to pick it up here. They need to win this game to stay alive in the winner's finals. Uh, granted, with the way the double elimination format works, if they lose, they're not completely out of the tournament, but their job just becomes that much more difficult. So we'll see what they can do here. Regret will be the second map of this best of three and guess what as it always goes we're gonna see a 2v2 fight at overshield to start the game i can almost guarantee it they're all pushing for that low ground going for the overshield that's gonna be outfit looking for the secure and he immediately gets taken out yeah and it wasn't much of a fight because outfit didn't even shoot his gun going for the overshield or or have an attempt to to get a kill there he just wanted to kind of get that overshield or not get that overshield and Bound and Neptune did a damn good job of making sure he didn't get it. And with that, a 2-0 lead. Complete map control going to the favor of Bound and Neptune. And a question will start from Outman and Tyranny. You kind of want to see them try to duke it out and, and play for that overshield successfully, not just whim and, and pray that you're able to pick it up before you get by. Um, that kind of strategy typically doesn't work against some of the best in the world. And uh, I would front upon executing that uh, again in this game. 2-0 lead here. Bound 
to Neptune going for the push on an outfit. He could be in big trouble. He is able to get the kill on to Neptune, though. A perfect kill. Good job from Outfit there. And his teammate actually able to get a bit of a trade and ooh, a little bit of BM there from Outfit. <laughs> They've closed the gap to one. It's a three to two score as we hop on board with Tyranny. Looking to work with Outvade here, taking some shots from Pound as he backs away. Good shots there from Pound. He's going to retreat to the safety of his teammate. Shields coming back up for Tyranny. Down. More shots. Takes Tyranny out in the 1v2. Yeah, somehow Outvade unable to finish this kill on the Bound, and now Bound is duck, dip, dive, and dodging all the way up to top middle and phenomenal jumps and scaling the map that he just performed in order to not only stay alive but get away. Uh, and and regain map control while doing so finding themselves up back up three right now That's just a little taste of what it's like to play against bound, right? Like you think you have him dead right snow shield pink one you chase him out Somehow he's already scaling the wall like spider-man up to up to pink two and, and up the top middle and, and now he's perfecting outvade on screen and that's that's the story of what it probably feels like to play against Neptune and Bound a lot of the time. And 8-2, to two, this game is starting to get ugly with the map control. And and it brings me back to that one kill that Outbay was unable to get on the Bound. It's kind of spiraled into these three kills, which has now turned into the overshield that's came up. And Bound with full overshield is not going to be an easy test to take out. Uh, because you had trouble taking him out when he had no shield. Tyranny running for his life. Gonna hop on board with Bound. He was able to pick up the overshield here. And something tells me we're gonna get some aggression out of this man right now. He's gonna go for Alvin. Great shots. Goes in for the melee. Able to finish off the kill, but Bound, or uh, make it Tyranny able to trade back and finish off that kill. It's 10 to 3 lead right now for Bound and Neptune. They're feeling very good shots on the Tyranny as he drops down to the low ground. Bound able to finish that one off. Eight kills right now for the leader of the red team and make it nine with the double kill. Yeah, Bound is on fire right now and as we see him just scaling the map uh, doing things that a majority of your top pros don't do. Is trying to get up to that top wedge on truth is uh, it's rarely ever seen in any competitive match, but 13 to 3, it feels like he has a little bit of leg room to kind of mess around and try and get up there. Does miss the jump for a second time, but he's going to have to focus up and focus on this fight right in front of him. Does jump, and actually, I'm not sure if that counts as a ninja, but we're going to go ahead and say he gets ninja. <laughs> exactly the spark that Tyranny and Outbay need to try and come back to the game. I think Bound has to stop messing around a little bit and, and focus more on the gameplay and less on I'm getting to some some pretty cheesy spots here, uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if he's able to focus up pretty quickly. Well, he goes down there once more, and the gap is starting to close. Bound needs to kind of get it under control here as Tyranny and Outvade are making a push to get back in this game. Down one to zero, they need this game. That's another kill and about. Bound has not done anything for the past about 60 seconds here. He's no. just continued to die, uh, mostly to yeah. Tyranny. And Gap now down to four as Neptune died there as well. Bouncing a lot of shots from up high. The high ground there for Tyranny doing a lot of work. Outbait able to pick up the overshield. Yeah, and Outbait with a huge back smack right there on the bound and is able to take down Neptune. He's on a seven kill spree right here and still down two kills, but this is the exact momentum that Outbait and Tyranny needed in this game. They needed to get a killing spree. They needed to pick up that next overshield and they've done both. And because of that, they're back in this game. What was once a blowout and Bound was trolling around the map trying to do some stupid jumps has turned into a very close game. And now you kind of got momentum on your side if you're outbait. But with that momentum, you still have to win your one-on-ones. He does end up trading the kills right there. Neptune with a big finish on the outbait. And that's going to slow down the momentum that this blue team is, was able to build over the past minute for just a little bit. Well, I think they're feeling pretty good. They were down by eight. They've closed the gap to four now but they cannot sit on their uh, they can't rest on their laurels here because 16 kills bound and neptune are not far off from a win that's a kill for bound as outfade goes down meanwhile tyranny and neptune in the 1v1 who's gonna win that one gonna hop over to tyranny's perspective he's just trying to buy some time as the shields are down waiting for outfade to join him neptune down there, the gap continues to be at four. Tyranny gets taken out, and that's kill number 18 is bound. Gets the double. Good job by him. And suddenly, it's looking like the finish line is in sight here for Bound and Neptune. Yeah, I kind of made fun of Bound for trying to get up to this uh, 
super high spot that's almost outside of the map at times. Um, earlier, he, he got killed earlier, but now he's been able to pick up three straight kills from these little wedges that he's able to get up to. So maybe there's some strategy behind it, and, and maybe once he's up there, he's able to get some pretty easy free kills. So uh, props to him. It does look like Alvade's going to eat a nade from his teammate, and Bound's going to take advantage of that by picking up the kill and a killing spree. Neptune's also going to finish off. Tyranny, the next over shield's looking like it's going to go in the hands of Neptune, and now Bound and Neptune with two kills to go have a full over shield and look to take this series 2 0. Yeah, it was looking promising. The middle part of this game, Tyranny and Outfade started to come back. Bound was suddenly ice cold for a couple of minutes, but he's rebounded. Neptune has got control of the over shield. They're looking to finish this off. Two more kills will secure it. Outfade in the 1v1 loses. Big time there, two bound, and one more kill will secure a spot in the grand finals for bound and Neptune. Tyranny and Outfit both alive now. Bound's gonna go for that high spot. Isn't able to get the jump. Neptune's gonna eat some shots. That's the melee. Tyranny's in trouble. He's trying to run. He will not escape. Bound secures his 16th kill of the game, and that will be their spot in the grand finals. Yeah, Bound and Neptune toured with their food a little bit in that game and learned a very quick lesson that they need to take this serious and, and having that ability to instantly snap back into reality and, and finish the game out like we know they're going to. Um, make the game another semi-blowout, right? A 10-point win uh, in a 2v2 to 25 is, is pretty much a blowout to me. Um, and Bound and Neptune did that in both games. And that's just a testament to how strong this 2v2 team is. Um, even against some some of the best that we've seen today in Outvade and Tyranny. And, and these are no pushover players in Outvade and Tyranny. So I think it's just important to focus on how good Neptune and Bound can really be when they're playing at their A game. Definitely a huge performance there. Uh, no real surprise, I would say, for us. That's kind of you know the expectation we had coming into this matchup. We have high hopes for Bound and Neptune, and we'll see if they can keep that going when we see them uh, at the end of our broadcast in our grand finals. We've obviously got a bunch of losers bracket action ahead of us, and we will hit that up once we come back from a break. So make sure to stick around, folks. In the meantime, check out our social medias on Twitter and Instagram at Esports Arena. Facebook.com slash Esports Arena USA and check out our week, uh, our website at EsportsArena.com. But meanwhile, Clutch and I, we're going to take a quick break, grab a drink of water, and we'll be back with more Halo 5 in just a few.
right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. Yeso and Clutch here bringing you more action from our Sunday Halo 5 2v2 tournament. We just saw a fantastic and very dominant winner's bracket finals from Bound and Neptune as they advanced to Grands. And now we are down to the loser's side of the bracket. We got Pure Whiskers and Hydro taking on Gold Star VR here and Sab. See if they can keep themselves alive for a hopeful rematch at the end of this bracket with Bound and Neptune once again. And we'll see as we're on to Truth once again to kick things off. Yeah, and, and I fully expect Sav and Goldstar to be able to rebound. I fully expect to see them uh, compete in the Losers Finals at the very least and, and put on a good show here through the Losers bracket and kind of gain some momentum for the rest of this bracket. Um, and it looks like so do they, having started off 3-0, to zero, Sav flying everywhere, picking up a few kills on the way. 30 seconds in, they find themselves up. Haven't died yet. They don't spot the player top right, and that's going to be a big blunder for Sav. But he's oh, able to stay alive and hide. Matter. Hydro unable to finish the kill, and Goldstar being in perfect position right there to, to have Sab's back when he needs it and go up 4-0. to zero. Good teamwork to see out of Goldstar and Sab, and that's what we're going to need to see from them if they want to make this a, a good loser's bracket run. Definitely a dominant performance to start off. Hydro going for the challenge once more, but Goldstar VR able to take him out. Doesn't even completely lose his shields there, so it's a 6-0 start. And your Whiskers and Hydro, they just need to get a kill under their belt. They need to kind of get their feet wet, really, in this final, and they haven't yet. As, oh, finally there, Goldstar VR does go down. So that is the first kill on the board for the blue team. Is here with Sab, he's able to take out Hydro, who is standing on the high ground, isn't able to stay safe. And that is a, another kill here, Sab with three so far. Let's hop over with Pure Whiskers, see if he can get anything going in the middle of the map. See if he can get up to the high ground here, and he will for the moment. See Sab, can he get some shots onto this top performing player? It's collapsed on there. Gold Star BR with the grenade able to take him out and then Hydro quickly afterward. Gold Star BR does get traded out, but it's still a 10 to 2 lead for the red team. Yeah, on the bright side, you traded kills. On the downside, you're down 8 already, so you can't <laughs> afford to trade kills, right? Um, it's it's a tough situation now because Pure Wishers and Hydro being a clear underdog before this series started is, is continuing that underdog story by allowing this this lead to get out of hand uh for sab and gold star and, and coming back against anybody is going to be difficult but against sab and gold star it's going to be virtually impossible without power weapons it looks like and a pure whiskers trying to play pretty quickly and trying to bring some pace to the match is going to be able to kind of press gold star and get a kill right there as hydra is able to trade with sab and that that's exactly what you want to see if you're a blue team fan but it's almost like the game just started and it's almost too little too late right because 13 to 5 and a game to 25, you have to almost make up for the errors that you made earlier and you're not able to trade kills um, effectively, uh, resulting in the score, right? So a couple of kills do go in their favor back and it being 6 to 3, they're able to pick up gold stars, 7 to 13 right there. And that's a bit of a start to what you want to see as far as maybe some light uh, into winning this game, but you got to continue to play perfect and can't mess up anywhere along the way if your whiskers and hydro and it looks like they are going to try and press sabinator under the under the base and and this is a completely new whiskers and hydro that we've seen in, instead of the first couple minutes right they're baiting and switching they're staying alive and and they're using some great teamwork to pick up their kills now the lead being dwindled down to five this is a phenomenal comeback that we're seeing out of our boys team. Yeah, we'll see if they can keep it going. The thing that I was really worried about when that gap was opened up to eight kills was you, you need to be able to slow Gold Star BR and Sab down because they were paying it, playing at such a fast pace that there's really no room to breathe. But Whiskers and Hydro have actually been able to do that for a bit. That's a, one, a two for one trade for them. So that's huge, closing that gap down to four. They've slowed the game down and it's given them more opportunities to get some teamwork going, to try and get the flanks and the pushes that they like. And it's changing the pace of this game and Sab able to get a kill there actually gold star vr taking out hydro as the red team looks to respond that's another kill for them and the gap opened back up to six yeah and 16 to 10 whiskers and hydro's uh comeback just got shut down a little bit but the momentum's still there right and and the confidence is starting to regain 
And Gold Star BR trying to do his best to make sure that that doesn't happen. Picking up another kill. 17 to 10. Um, there's still such a comfortable lead ahead of him, no matter what Whispers and Hydro have done to kind of cut into that lead. It's still growing um, with every kill. But Whiskers and Hydro able to pick up a kill on the Gold Star, and that's the kind of uh, perfect teamwork they're going to need in order to make this a closer game one. BR right now lost his shields but camping up on the high ground here oh good finish able to take out hydro sab with the plasma grenade finishes off whiskers there and now 19 points just six more kills to take the first game of this losers semi final or excuse me uh, quarterfinal i should say good kill there whiskers gets caught with his back turn gold star br gonna take another kill there finishes it off with the headshot still has half his shield so he's gonna go for the push here see if he can find hydro hydro actually just goes down to sab 21 kills now for the red team yeah the lead back up to 10 as well and the four kills needed for our red team to call themselves victors of game one does look like it's gonna be too little too late for for whiskers and hydro to kind of turn on their their teamwork right and we're seeing a glimpse of it, which is great for, for game two. And this is very important that they're not completely blown out of game one, right? Uh, getting your confidence ready for game two is, is so important in a best of three series because this game one uh, is not the end of the world, right? You, you still have the opportunity to win this series losing game one. But it, it's so much more difficult to mentally be ready for a game two if you, if you absolutely get blown out. So... There is a little bit of something you can take away if you're rooting for Whiskers and Hydro here in game one. It's, it's that, yes, they got off to the worst start possible, but they were able to kind of climb back and, and show signs of life when it comes to competing in the, in this series and, and for the rest of the games that the outcome is not predetermined. Sab really trying to reassert his dominance here. Gold Star VR with the grenade will be able to finish that one off. That's a 10 kill win there for the red team, and they take the lead in at this best of three. Uh, looked a little shaky in the middle, as you mentioned. Hydro and Whiskers were able to get things moving, close that gap significantly. I think it got up to the, uh, the, the biggest lead we saw in the early game was eight. They closed it down to about three or four. Uh, and then we're never able to quite close that gap further uh, and end up going down. But Sab and Gold Star BR are able to pick it up, uh, pick it up in the tail end of that game, finish off a strong performance there, and now they have the lead going into game two. Yeah, I think from the start of that game, it was like, are Whiskers and Hydro going to get a kill this game? And they ended up actually making it like a relatively just a, like a beating, right? Instead of like a major blowout where there was a potential goose or something. So. Um, they kind of rebounded in the middle of that game a little bit stronger, but is that due to like laziness of Sab and Gold Star? Like, did they just already understand that this game was basically over and start to get lazy with their play? Because immediately when the game got to a five kill game, you saw it jump back up to 10 as soon as Sab and Gold Star kind of regained any bit of control of the map. Um, I'd be very worried if this game two starts off. Uh, very poorly for Whiskers and Hydro because coming back in those kind of games uh, doesn't happen often and consistently it, it's difficult to to try and rebound in the middle of the game so looking for Whiskers and Hydro to kind of have a hotter start to game two in order for it to be a little bit closer and if they're unable to game two could get ugly Yeah, we're uh, just looking to get things set up here in the lobby before we get into the next game of the series. And then Pure Whiskers and Hydro being in the loser's bracket, you have to get a win here. Otherwise, you are done for the day. We'll see what they can make of it. As you mentioned, a little bit to build on with how the last game went. Uh, do we gotta wait on whiskers and hydro to they they gotta activate uh allow observers? It keeps <laughs> I keep switching the magenta team and then it hey they did it all right no server <laughs> am I crazy? Keep switching me back. Uh, I've got it on observer, but it was not an easy task, I'll say that. So, good luck. I'm rooting for you. I'm trying. No, it keeps switching me back to red team. 
<laughs> I just want to watch. I don't want to play. I'm bad. I went over this in Twitch chat. I even highlighted my message. <laughs> What's going on? All right. Bear with us, folks. Pardon uh, the sort of delay. As we try to get the uh, the lobby fixed here. Because as much fun as it is and as much as, as I'd like to see Clutch carry um, my boosted butt in a game, I'm here to cast, not to play. So. I'm also here to cast. Uh, I do not want to... <laughs> uh, there we be, go. ...be forced to compete along, along the sides of Seven and Gold Star, because I'm pretty sure I would get worked. <laughs> Having not played Halo 5 in a couple of months. He's a little out of practice, but that's okay. There we go. Looks like Observer's working now. All right. We made it, ladies and gentlemen. We're 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 here. Uh let's take, let's see. Um. There we go. Clutch is in there too. Guys, uh, after this series, I will be giving away a G Fuel, a free G Fuel starter kit. Uh, so if you guys want to be eligible to win that, just make sure you are uh, active in chat because it will be, it's, uh, you know, all the recent active users that are eligible uh, for the giveaway. So after this series is done, uh, I will be giving that away. So make sure you guys are just talking in chat, talk about the series, you know, feel free to, to flame me in chat or talk about how everybody was talking about bound the, every who, who the worst players in halo 5 were earlier and they were highlighting all their messages let's keep it civil but you know a little flame it's fine to an extent a little friendly banter is always a yeah. good time yeah there you see clutch gets it clutch yeah. gets it we yeah. are on to plaza here second game of the series it is the 1-0 lead for gold star vr and sab and i want to start right off here with sab's perspective early battle over the over shield here we'll see gold star vr able to pick it up sab looking to push for a kill but he's gonna back away for now hydro did go down gold star vr able to secure that kill and it's a 1-0 lead for the red team i have no idea how gold star vr gets that over shield uh amongst <laughs> both players on the blue team but he's able to swoop in there and, and not only like steal the overshield, but get away with his life and the kill in the process. And now he's found himself with a sniper. And that's a major blunder for Whiskers and Hydra to start this game two off with. Um, and a great job by Gold Star VR. So uh, a bit of a mistake already made by the blue team. And you want to see that being minimized, trying to take this to a game three uh, if you're a blue team fan. But Gold Star VR kind of looking to shut that that plan down. Immediately goes into, into blue and picks up a kill. Does miss the no scope, so loses the snipe, but Sab's right there to finish off the kill and pick up the snipe. And now, red team with a little bit of map control, the sniper, the power weapons, they know the overshield time. Uh, things looking like game one all over again. Yep, the uh, the lead not getting out of hand quite yet. It's still just three to two in favor of Sab and as far as he did work out. Hydro gets some good damage here and actually takes out Sab. So if he wants, he can grab that sniper and he will do so as we are all knotted up at three. Yeah, and that was a, a, ma a major kill from Hydra right there on the Sab, right? Uh, shuts down Sab's ability to go off with the snipe, picks up the snipe for himself, ties the game, and now his team's been able to find the lead. So just when you think game one's going to kind of rear its ugly head yet again, Hydro picks up a very important kill and a power weapon in doing so. And, and now it's a little bit different of a story. Now Hydro and Whiskers now have an opportunity to kind of take over this game too. All right. Let's check out what's going on here with Gold Star BR. He's looking for the high ground trying to spot the enemy. And Sab will get eyes on them. Gold Star BR just waiting to see if they come to the flank. But he had the overshield and he's going to use it. That's my Xbox just got and reach too, wow. 
feel so special. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that. <laughs> Let me just derail this entire cast for about thirty get, seconds. <laughs> getting back to the game, though, like I think that that was a very important overshot that somehow Hydra and Whispers really weren't positioned to get. Um, and, and somehow Gold Star finds himself with the second overshot as well. And, and and if that story continues, Gold Star and, and Sav are gonna run away with this game too, because there's no way you can just continue to give them overshields and power weapons and expect to kind of stay in the game. As you see, the lead go from. Uh, four to three in favor of Whiskers the Hydra to immediately seven to four. The four straight unanswered kills for Sab and Goldstar, and that's by no coincidence because they were able to get the next overshield. And with it, they've gained all this momentum throughout this this second half to the start of this game. And yes, it does look like Hydra was able to pick up the snipe off spawn, but he's running for his life right now as Sab and, and Goldstar are chasing him down. Better run, Sab coming coming to get you, but that is going to be Whiskers able to take him down. As that's a one for one trade with both Hydro and Sab going down. Gold Star BR does have control of the high ground here, and Sab looking to rejoin him as Hydro getting some shots out of the corner. Sab nearly loses his shields, but able to back away. Who does take a shot there? He's in a little bit of trouble. He's got to buy a little bit of space for shields to re respawn. He may go here for the dual push. Hydra taking a lot of shots here. Big trouble, Sab able to finish that one off. Gold Star VR taking a Whiskers as well, and that's an 11 5 lead. Yeah, and Sab, and that's what you fear, right? You fear when Sab and Gold Star are able to get power weapons and power ups that they're just going to run away with some of these games. And uh, just like that, they have snipe control. They pick up a couple of crucial kills before Overshield spawns, and now they have control of the Overshield. Gold Star with his third straight Overshield this game. Um, making the game 12 to 5. They're going to make it 13 5 as they pick up a kill on the Whiskers. And now they're just playing so aggressive to where Whiskers and Hydra are on different spawn timings and different rotations to where it's continuously a 2v1 against an overshield sniper uh, and his teammate, right? And that's, uh, that's an impossible task for Hydra and Whiskers to try and compete with. So any plan that they had to kind of bring this to a game 3 is being thrown out the window. A 10 kill lead, 15 to 5. In a game of 25, Gold Star and Sab really picking it up here, and that's what you want to see from them if they want to make a good loser's bracket run here. Sab trying to chase through Tram there to take out Hydro, and good performance from him. Make it eight kills there as he takes out Whiskers. Meanwhile, a ninth kill for Gold Star a little while ago. Uh, was able to use that sniper very effectively, and it's now a 12 kill lead. Sab now with the platform. Looking to get in behind one of these blue team players, gonna drop Hydra actually able to take him down. With Gold Star or Gold Star BR falls to Pure Whiskers. A couple of perfect kills there for them. So good job from the blue team trying to make a comeback. It's gonna be a small, you know, task here for them to do it, but that's how it's gonna start. Yeah, and they're gonna need a couple more perfect kills to go their way if they want to try and come back in this game, right? Hydra picking up another kill with the light rifle right there is a good job. They spot Sab. They're probably able to kill Sab here without any damage done. They do it correctly, and they are with the snipe coming up in 10 seconds. This is the moment that they're going to really have to take advantage of, is getting control of the sniper and, and putting it to work. Um, and and in doing so, giving them an opportunity to come back in this game. But Sab gets off spawn and immediately takes down Whiskers right before the snipe comes up. And now this next overshield... It's going to be basically a free-for-all for people competing on it. And you see Gold Star trying to make his way towards it. Does take down Whiskers, but Hydro above him is able to swoop in, pick up the overshield for himself. But Sab's going to have the sniper, so now we see one power weapon in the hands of Sab and Gold Star. The overshield goes to Hydro. Um, and this is a big moment for Whiskers and Hydro because they have so little room for air. Yeah, Hydro going for the aggressive push here. Sab's going to go down. A kill there for Whiskers as well. Now at seven. The work is starting, but it might be too little too late here as Sab and RBR are just six kills away from the win and moving on to the loser's bracket semifinal. Sab now pushing, trying to get up above the blue team. Good grenade and able to finish off the kill on the Hydro. He's like, for a second, make it the double kill. Beautiful from Sab as Hydro goes down. Yeah, and, and that's going to be all she wrote right there with... With that sniper unable to do any work with it in the hands of Hydro and Whiskers and Sab picking up a huge two kills to continue that lead to 10. Three kills to go. It's 23 to 12. Two kills 
needed for red team to move on in this bracket and a great rebound performance after losing that winner's finals right there from seven gold star to make sure it doesn't kind of linger with them and and that they lose twice in a row right uh they need to get this ship uh steady and, and on the right path in order to come back in this tournament and win and this is just what the doctor ordered in in, in this losers bracket series big win there for gold star br and they will move on they've got a date now with trapping buttons here in the next round that's in the losers semi finals and that best of three will be coming up right after this uh, i don't even think we're going to go to a break the matchup should be ready to go so i'm thinking i'm going to just try and give away uh some g fuel here and then hopefully we'll be ready for the next match let me just make sure that I ping these guys. Uh, and we're actually going to stay in the lobby, so we should be just fine. We shouldn't even have to go anywhere. Um, so if you guys have been active in chat, I can give away a code for a free G Fuel starter kit here. Let's head over. Got some people eligible. I'm going to give you guys like 30 seconds. Get your messages in chat if you want to be eligible to win. Just drop a hello, drop a drop a pog champion in the uh, in chat. And we'll do a little little G Fuel starter kit giveaway. Bunch of penguin emotes. Uh yep. <laughs> in the chat, you'll love to see that. Love yes, to see you the do. Orders of, of penguin. He's a good pro. Uh, yes, you do. And, and a good attitude and good to support him. I uh, see some ace praise in the chat as well. I'm going to get a little more light in here. All right, we got 17 people eligible. Let's roll it. Who do we got? Who's going to win that G Fuel starter kit? It's going to be Mainstream Rap getting in at the wire there. You have one. So congratulations. Let me just grab a code here. Where are my codes? There they are. Grab one of those G Fuel codes. All right, Mainstream Rap, thanks for hanging out. I'm going to whisper you this code on Twitch right now. So please just reply to confirm that you got the code. And enjoy your free G Fuel starter kit. Uh, also do want to mention I saw Sparzix in the chat earlier. You said you forgot what you won. They let you know. And you said you didn't get one yet. Uh, check your whispers on Twitch, Sparzix, if you're still watching. I sent you uh, a whisper from my uh, Twitch account, at Caster Yeso. Uh, so you should have the code for your free 14-day trial there. Uh, but there you go, mainstream wrap. And I got, uh, I'll got i give away uh, at least one more of those G Fuel codes uh, here before the end of the broadcast, folks. So make sure uh, to stick around for that. And now I'm just going to get going here. I want to make sure that we got our next opponents getting into the lobby okay well the boss says we are going to head to a short break while we get prepared for this next match so thanks for hanging out folks stick around we've got more halo 5 coming to you in just a few <laughs>
All right, ladies and gentlemen, even if you can't see them, our beautiful faces have returned. Yeso and Clutch here getting ready for our Losers Bracket semifinals. We got Gold Star and BR, who we just, uh, Gold Star BR and Sab, I should say, who we just saw in a dominant win going up against Vetra and tapping buttons with a spot in the Losers Bracket finals on the line. And we're kicking things off, not on truth, but on regrets. We've got the battle for the Overshield. Yeah, I expect this series to be super close, right? I think Vetra and Tapping Buttons both have a ton of individual skill. And um, and they kind of match up probably pretty well with Sab and Gold Star. This is going to be a much more difficult series for Sab and Gold Star than the one that we just previously watched. And just as I say that, Tapping Buttons picks up the overshield. Vetra picks up the first kill and a good start for the blue team right now. Yeah, and, and interestingly enough, we've seen so many teams in that first battle for the overshield on Regret uh, immediately just dashing in there, trying to grab it really fast and then getting punished for it. And instead, both teams took a slower approach. Once they got a little bit of space, tapping buttons, runs in for the finish. They get the kill almost simultaneously. And now it's a 3-0 lead. So the blue team looking very strong and really going. Yeah, and to your point, 4-0... Turning this overshield immediately into the scoreboard and transitioning it into kills. Um, this is a perfect start from Tapping Buttons and Vetra's. Tapping Buttons still goes, does go down, but Vetra's able to finish the kill right there and, and maintain this four kill lead. Um, great job by them so far to kind of work extremely well together, traverse the map together, and, and be there in perfect position to trade that kill out. And that's a recipe for success when you have a four kill lead. Very strong start from Veteran Tapping. Buttons, Sab, and Gold Star BR uh, thankful to finally be on the board here with their first kill, but things not getting any easier. So Veteran's going to take that kill onto Gold Star BR and another one onto Sab, the double kill, and the blue team continuing to look clean. Yeah, and clean and dominant, right? I think that uh, this is a not what I expected to see how this game one was going to start off. I expected a super close game, and right now it's 8-1. to one. Uh, So either Sab or Goldstar and still need a kill to get on the scoreboard, having two minutes already passed in this game. And the league continuing to grow kind of out of hand. Overshield is going to be coming up in 20 seconds. We want to pay attention to that. And the kill's leading up to it, but if tapping buttons and Vetra are able to kind of get control of that overshield, then that's going to really result into an ugly game. And tapping buttons with a perfect kill and then a double kill on the Sab right behind it. This is going to be a blowout with the way that this game is started off. Tapping buttons is going to have to change the name to tapping heads the way he's playing right now. Vetra and Sab going to trade back and forth with the melee kills there. And it's an 11 to 2 lead here. Uh, this is just a clinical performance. Vetra and Tapping Buttons just picking Sab and Gold Star BR apart. Now, granted, Gold Star BR able to grab the overshield, which is huge. We'll have to see if the red team can take advantage uh, of that pickup. Let's see if they can secure some kills. Yeah, Tapping Buttons uh, playing this super slow, and, and Vetra as well. Trying to get back together to where they can use the team with that's helped them build this lead, but it does look like Vetra's gonna get caught off guard right there by Gold Star right behind him. And fortunately for Gold Star and Sab, they were able to pick up that overshield and and not allow Tapping and Vetra to continue to run away with this lead. Eleven to four, they have cut into it a little bit, but a seven kill lead is still very comfortable in a game to twenty five. And Vetra uh, traversing top middle right now. We're not sure if Sab or Goldstar was able to locate him, and because of that, he's able to get next to tapping buttons. And and we've seen what they've done so far when they've been near each other and been able to use this this uh, glue-like teamwork with each other in order to pick up a few kills in a row. So I'm kind of expecting it to go that way, but Sab gets a huge kill on the tapping buttons to shut that story down and close this gap 11-5. to five. Hopping on board with Sab right now, and uh, you know, have to kind of note it's been a three to zero kill swing since Gold Star BR was able to pick up that overshoot. It's been slow, but still cutting into this lead bit by bit. Sab and Vetra able to trade one for one there, so the deficit remains at six. Yeah, and six kills still a large lead. Overshoot's going to be coming up this minute, so. If you want to see Sab and Gold Star continue this comeback, they're going to have to focus on getting this over shoulder, making sure at the very least the tapping buttons and Vetra aren't able to get control of it because we saw the damage they were able to do earlier on. A trade coming in, tapping buttons gets a kill, Sab gets a kill, but tapping buttons able to pick up a double kill 
standing on the overshoot. He's going to be ready for it when it comes up, and he's going to delay it just a little bit to get an exact time to throw Sav and Gold Star off, and that just shows the mind games that they're also playing. It's not just gun skill. It's also uh, creating a meta and allowing that skill gap to further uh, determine the rest of this game. Tapping Buttons does get stuck by Sab, but ends up staying alive. Uh, the Overshield's out, but not without the damage of a few kills going in favor of Tapping and Petra once again. Yep, the gap now back up to nine kills, and I'm gonna head over and check out what Vetra's got going on. He gets taken down, able to trade with Gold Star BR and Sab with a second kill, taking out Tapping Buttons. So that's a good little trade, but uh, you know, as you mentioned, it may be too little to play. Blue team already up to 17 kills. They're already so close to the win here. Uh, and Gold Star VR and Sav still get to hit double digits. It's another kill there for tapping buttons. He's been very strong. Eight kills for him, 10 for Vetra. They're looking for another here. Vetra going to get his 11th, taking out Gold Star VR. Sav able to trade back, taking down tapping buttons, and they can finally hit double digits. But too little, too late, it would appear, for the red team in this first game. Yeah, it, it really is too little, too late, especially on a map like Regret with no power weapons in order to kind of swing momentum in one way or another. There's just an overshield. And although an overshield's nice, it's not necessarily the damage output you need in order to close a gap like 11 kills. And, and because of that, Sab and Goldstar are kind of out of answers. Yes, they're winning one-on-ones. Um, more often than they were at the start of this game, but because of the, the difference that was the start of this game, we're seeing this game still continue to be a nine kill game. And a game to 25, blue team still needing just four kills to close this one out. Um, it's all about uh, what can Sav and Gold Star really do right now, other than play perfect Halo and, and try and get their confidence ready for game two, because for them to try and win this game would be in a very monumental task. But Sab does pick up the next overshield, and, and that's a start to uh, trying to conquer the mountain that they're trying to climb here in game one. Vetra trying to go for the uh, the cheeky little ninja play there. Wasn't able to get it, and Sab will hold on to the overshield and secure a 13th kill there for the red side. Meanwhile, Vetra dropping nades there. Sab able to get another kill up to 14. Big mountain still yet to climb, but they have... You know, the journey of a thousand miles always begins with a single step tapping button. Meanwhile, just trying to be patient until Vetra respawns and Vetra back. Very patient play from the blue side right now. They know how close they are to the win. They don't need to uh, play overly aggressive and give an opportunity for the red side to come back. And they have shifted their play style accordingly. accordingly. Yeah, poor uh, positioning by Sab and Goldstar to not be kind of in position to work with each other and, and help each other out in that situation. Sab is actually going to fall uh, top pink, and once again he's going to fall without Goldstar really influencing the fight at all, and then he's going to end up losing a 1v2. Uh, and that just goes to show that Tapping Buttons and Vetra are having phenomenal teamwork here in Game 1 and, and are in position to help each other out. You want to see more of that from Goldstar, VR, and Sab in Game 2 to make this series a little bit closer. Definitely going to need to see a, uh, a shift in play from these two. They don't want to get swept in this best of three. Sab, uh oh, he's caught right between both players here. That's going to be the victory 25 to 14 for Vetra and tapping buttons. An impressive start to this loser's semifinals match. Yeah, very impressive. Not really what I expected, but maybe that's shame on me because Vetra and tapping are. Two proven, very talented players, and uh, they're they're showing a little bit of their skill right there in game one. And I would say, you know, part of it is is credit to Sab and Gold Star BR. Uh, we've seen uh, they've played very, very well today. Outside of when they got knocked down to the losers bracket, they have consistently looked very, very strong. And I would say, you know, that last game was below expectations for them. So I'm hoping for a bounce back performance in game two. I certainly think they are capable, but. You know, it's not like tapping buttons and Betra are going to allow them to do it. They're going to make it very, very difficult for them to even up this series. No, absolutely. And taking a look at the assists, um, just one assist for Sab, six for Gold Star, um, seven and eight for tapping buttons and Betra. And that just shows that they were in much better positions to help each other out and finish each other's uh, kills and impact each other's kills. Um, and I think that that's just such an important quality when looking for a 2v2 partner. 
and, and playing around your partner. All right. Well, the next map is going to be Truth. Has consistently been what I've seen a pretty strong map for Sab and Gold Star BR. Uh, so we'll see how they can perform here. We are loading in and getting ready for game number two. And this is a must have for the red team as if they lose this one, their day is done and tapping buttons and Metra would move on and we'll see how things shake out. I'm hoping for a stronger start here from Sav and Gold Star PR. They really were behind the eight ball with the strong uh, early game from Vetra and tapping buttons. I want to see that shift in their favor this time around. They want to have a hope. Yeah, absolutely. I think they're going to have to really turn it around here in game two to have any hope to make this a series because game one was not close and it was based off a really poor start. So looking for Sav and Gold Star to, to make sure they don't start off the game uh, as poorly as they just did game one. And because of that, to, to give themselves a better opportunity to take this to game three. All right, well, a couple of solid early kills here and it is a two to one lead. It's obviously the first, you know, the first 25, 30 seconds here, but that is how you want that to start if you're Sab. Star here and Sab looking for more, trying to get some shots onto Vetra, and Vetra is going to back away for now. Gold Star BR maybe looking for a bit of support here as tapping buttons trying to retreat to the lift. Vetra getting some shots off and does tag Gold Star BR and finish off the second kill there for the blue side. Yeah, Sab uh, does a good job of staying alive there, and tapping buttons doesn't find him when he's no shield, and it looks like they are going to be able to kind of push on to Sab, but what is it going to cost them? They are able to trade the kills out um, immediately. So it's a great job by Gold Star BR to kind of get in position to help Sab in a sticky situation there and, and trade that kill. And 3-3, three to three, already a better start for Sab and Gold Star here in Game 2 than Game 1. Um, but for how long can they have that last? It looks like they're going to have... The mentality that this is going to a game three because they're up five to four now and that's a phenomenal start compared to what we saw previously in game one Definitely a lot better a two kill lead here bodes very well for sab and gold star sab with a good kill on the grenade it opens up their seventh kill Vetra's down, tapping buttons is going to be spotted there by sab and we'll see if they can collapse on it before vetra can join his teammate he has respawned Two blue players kind of split apart here as Vetra trying to get some shots on Sab. Tapping button's gonna get tapped a little bit by the red team. Let's hop on board with Vetra right now. Vetra gonna be able to get the kill onto Gold Star PR thanks to a well placed grenade up to the high ground in the center of the map. And now he's looking at the blast with tapping buttons. Sab gonna take some damage here, trying to retreat for a safe place, but Vetra's gonna find him and take the kill. Yeah, big kill by Vetra right there to kind of allow tapping buttons the freedom to win his 1v1 as well against Gold Star off screen. And now the game is back all tied up 7-7 seven to seven and momentum in the favor of tapping buttons and Vetra as you see him fly into blue looking for spawners. Knows that they're going to be cars out of the map. At least one of them tapping buttons picks up a kill uh, from Gold Star's point of view. And that's another big one-on-one -on -one for tapping buttons. Tapping buttons really on fire right now. And Vetra with the reversal on the sab. Both players on our blue team winning their one-on-ones, and because of it, they've got a two-kill lead now. Seven kills for Vetra, three kills and four assists for tapping buttons so far. So great teamwork between these two. That's why they have this 10-9 lead. Meanwhile, tapping buttons able to finish off the RBR there, and now looking for the collapse. Sab is low. Can he get the finish of the melee? Will finish it off. Good job there by Vetra to take the kill. Now, Sab and Gold Star BR down by two. Yeah, I just want to say how impressed I am with tapping buttons this play so far in, in these 2v2s. And I know we haven't had it on too much of a screen, but I mean, he is just like winning one on ones against these high skill players. And uh, just as I said, that uh, Sab is going to win a one on one. <laughs> and that's how that it works, works, right? Everybody in this match is pretty individually skilled to where they're going to all be winning uh, some one on ones that they probably shouldn't, but tapping so far. Has shown a lot of uh, his A game, I'll say, and, and making sure that he brings it uh, to this very important game too, because he doesn't want to see a game three against Sab and Gold Star. He wants to finish it off right here, and his gameplay is doing the talking with that. 
thankfully clutch here to give credit where credit is due. And why don't we check out tapping buttons right now? Trying to work with Vetro, but Vetro's gonna go down and we'll start BR take that kill now for 1v1 against Sav. Tapping buttons get this. His shield's at about a third. Sav looking to run plasma grenade. He's actually gonna bounce back towards him. He's gonna have to back away, and now it's the 1v2. He's in a bit of trouble, but Vetra actually here for the long range support. They're gonna take the kill on a gold star. Now Sav down to the bottom here. Grenades coming out from tapping buttons. He's gonna look to finish this off. Vetro's got the high ground. Tapping buttons finishes the kill gold star br trades back once more but the lead is maintained by the blue team yeah sad bought just enough time for uh gold star to get off spawn and, and finish the kill that he was able to lie damage down to but that was even better teamwork from tapping buttons and vetra right there to go two and one and, and debate and switch and somehow tapping buttons stayed alive as long as he did car one and now tapping buttons flying into the base is able to get a double melee onto Sab. And it looks like just the aggression from the blue team is something I love to see, especially against uh, players that that you probably view yourself as equal to or a little bit intimidated by at times. Uh, it doesn't look like tapping buttons is intimidated at all as he's soaring across the map, winning his one-on-ones continuously against Gold Star, showing him a little bit of what he learned uh, competing at the highest level in Halo 5. I, I think he hit the nail on the head right there. It's tapping buttons, playing with no fear right now. He's feeling very confident to take any sort of fight. Uh, and, and part of that is, too, it, Vetra has been very good at responding, backing up his teammate. The teamwork has been fantastic between the two. As that's the stick coming out from tapping buttons, looking for another kill here. He will go down, but Vetra immediately trades back. And recognizing that you're always going to have that quick response and that quick backup from your teammate allows you to play more aggressive and really tapping buttons in Vetra's play styles, freeing each other up to play, uh, uh, you know, up to their limits. Yeah, and phenomenal teamwork, right? I think, like, that this is a great recipe for success, and I'm super excited to see this team continue on, but we might not see that because Sab and, and Goldstar have picked up a few kills to make it a five kill game, but three kills to go for tapping and Vetra. Is it too little too late? Once again, we we are probably going to be crowning the winner of this series as tapping and Vetra as long as a miracle doesn't happen because tapping smells blood in the water is able to pick up some hit markers on the Sab. Sab does get away with his life as his teammate goes uh, and kills uh, Vetra, but for how long can Sab hide under this base? No tapping button smells him, but he can't find him immediately. Sab does a phenomenal job of hiding, getting his shields back, and then re-challenging to where tapping buttons kind of gets lost. But Vetra, having enough time to swoop across the map and finish that kill, it's going to make it that much closer to ending this game, too. Yeah, Sab and Gold Star VR really needed to be able to take out Vetra in that 2v1, but... Sab couldn't get behind cover fast enough, and Vetra was able to secure the kill. It's 24 to 21 kill here as tapping buttons heading for the center of the map. He's actually going to stay towards the outskirts here. Sab looking for something. They can be patient. This, you know, it is 20 kills, but just one more here secures the game, and tapping buttons just plays. Oh, he gets the grenade! Wow! The grenade of destiny off of the floor takes down Gold Star BR and sends them to the losers bracket finals. Yeah, I'm not sure if he knew that grenade was about to pick up a kill, but <laughs> fortunately, that grenade bounces off a wall. It probably shouldn't have, and and Tapping is able to pick up that kill. 11, wow. 10, and 10 from Tapping. That's a, a pretty dominant performance. A triple double, as uh, the basketball term will call it. Right. There you go. Uh, 10 assists. For tapping buttons that's a ton of assists in a 2v2 that's the most we've seen today and veteran tapping are going to be moving on and and very well deserved because that was a great performance from both of them definitely well deserved an impressive performance from them and that means that tapping buttons and vetra have a date with outvade in the losers finals these two will match up to decide who moves on to face bound and neptune in Grant, what a fun match that was. Uh, not as close as we predicted, though that second game was much more exciting, uh, much more of a nail-biter there. Uh, so we've got more Halo 5 ahead of us, folks. Kathy is going to let me know if she's ready to go to a break. She says yes, so awesome. We are going to head to a quick break, get everything ready. But when we return, we've got the Losers Finals for you, folks. Don't go anywhere.
right, folks, we are back. It's Losers Finals time. Tyranny and Outfit against Tapping Buttons and Vetra, and this has got to be a very hype matchup. Is Tyranny going to take an early kill against Vetra? And this is a big test. These are the players that made it all the way to the winner's practice finals and got knocked out, and now this is a test for Vetra and Tapping Buttons if they are as good as we saw them in their last matchup. Outfit and Tyranny will suss that out for us. Yeah, I'm not sure who the favorite in this series is between Vetra and Tap, Outbait and Tyranny, I think. Uh, I don't know as much about Tyranny and Outbait as I do Veteran Tapping, but everything that we saw from Outbait and Tyranny say that they're here for a reason, and especially uh, traveling through the winner's bracket as far as they did, that's props to them, and, and they were as successful as they were there because they're playing well today, and I, I expect this to be a super close series. And Outbait and Tyranny already off to a hot start up 4 2. Definitely should be a good one here. Outbait looking for a bit of a push here. He sees tapping buttons kind of blanking him. He's caught between E and Vetra, and he's in big trouble. He needs Tyranny here for the support. It's a two kill lead for the red side. Can they get something? Oh, he's going to step right on top of the plasma grenade, and Vetra is going to take Outbait down. Tapping buttons follows up with the kill onto Tyranny, and we are tied. Yeah, tie ball game, we have it. Uh, four up, and tapping in Vetra with a little bit of map control, but Tyranny's going to shut that down immediately, winning a one-on-one -on -one against tapping buttons. And as we see, uh, it's going to force Vetra to kind of run back to red and, and allow Outbait and Tyranny the map control that uh, we saw Blue Team once have. Going for an aggressive push and he gets caught. That you're gonna take that kill. And we are again even F5. So early on, uh, this series shaping up to be a nail biter. A yes. Very close one. Very close game so far. I mean, really, it, it, it shows that neither team is playing um, as reckless as it sees that it's, it seems we typically see a lot of teams play in 2v2s. Everyone's kind of trying to formulate a game plan and work with their partner and in doing so they're having equal amount of success uh tapping a veteran do end up getting a kill to take the lead but immediately we see that traded kind of back towards tyranny over veteran and, and the game is tied 6-6 i expect this to kind of go down to the wire and and to escalate accordingly right yeah, I mean, neither of these teams letting the other build any sort of momentum. They're really trading kills back and forth, trading leads back and forth. Uh, and now a two-kill lead here for the blue team. So tapping buttons and Vetra. Little something going. We'll see as Outvade's going to be patient here. Waits for Tyranny to respawn before going for any sort of push. And he may be in the behind Vetra here. He's going to get some early shots. Can he finish the kill? Vetra going to dodge away. Outvade just able to finish it off with a nice headshot there. But Tyranny went down as well. So it's 9 to 7. Now firing across the map here. Tapping buttons. Going to be able to avoid a bit of that damage. And he's just going to go for a bit of a reset. Get those shields recharged and maybe look for something more. Now tapping buttons taking a couple of shots there. Vetra going in is going to get the melee kill there onto Outbait and we'll swap over to Vetra's POV. Yeah, I love that play by Outbait. They kind of patiently wait and end up picking up a super easy kill onto Vetra earlier on in that sequence, but they do end up just going one for one throughout the entire sequence, but it was a good job by Outbait to not get caught out and give up just a free death because he's by himself with his teammate across, spawning across the map. But it doesn't look like it's a matter to too much because Vetra and Tapping Buttons are still in control of the game, still in control of the map, and they've spotted Blood at top red. We see great shots from Vetra onto uh, Outbait and Tyranny, both top red for a second. But Tapping Buttons is going to go down far side and leave Vetra kind of in a 1v2 situation. He's getting sandwiched from both top car and pink, but he does a good job of staying alive, dodging the nades, getting a player to no shield where he backs one of them down. And a beautiful nade right there to get some hit markers and find out that there's a player front pink. There's a second nade to verify that that player is no longer there. And now he's got to worry about the player that's top middle pushing in on him. The player does drop down to pink one and actually pick up a kill on top of buttons. But Vetra doing a phenomenal job of, of making sure he gets a kill before going down here. Um, and, and buying some time for tapping buttons to come off respawn and finish out fade. And this is all because Vetra did uh, back to player down top car, stayed alive, uh, got a player no shield front P2, stayed alive, 
uh, end up winning the one-on-one -on -one top middle and then stayed alive again pink one Vetra having a phenomenal sequence there where he was knocked to no shield three straight times but was uh, kept his life all three times and and that's just so key when when trying to uh, to win an important match like this against the top players is, is being such a nuisance and not being an easy kill and because of that they built this seven kill lead 17 to 10. And largely off of a stellar performance by tapping buttons, he's got more kills than the the red team combined. Eleven for him, just ten for Alvade and Tyranny together right now. So this is a huge performance by tapping buttons. He wants to go to those grand finals, and he's putting in the work here. Vetra with some solid support, six kills, five assists for him. Tapping buttons going for the push. Vetra going to secure the kill onto Tyranny. Good job from him. Now he's trying to hunt down Alvade, and Alvade's going to go for the push, get some shots down. He is able to take out Vetra, but he's very low. Tapping buttons was actually down as well, so that is a couple secure kills for the red team now down by six. Yeah, and that was a great job by Alvade to win that one-on-one -on -one and stay alive as well. Just tapping buttons, looking for him off spawn, was out, unable to finish him. Um, and, and that's what it's going to take to kind of crawl back at this six-point lead. But tapping buttons gets a nice reversal kill on the tyranny right there, and now stays alive. Pink one, and and kind of outplays Alvade as he outshoots him as he's playing ring around the rosy. Pink one as well, so unbelievable. Kind of a one v two situation. Tapping buttons winning two straight one on ones against both tyranny and Alvade is going to extend this lead to eight. He's going to push immediately to the bubble and five shot perfect kill tyranny, uh, and that's three straight one v ones to tapping buttons has won he is now on fire and, and with oh, that man it looks like game one is going to go in his favor the tapping buttons playing like a man possessed right now continuing to force these aggressive fights and winning them one after the other now going for tyranny tyranny takes out vetra but tapping buttons gets revenge that's now 23 to 13 16 kills for tapping buttons yeah just when you think red team's going to kind of chop away at this lead and make it a close game towards the end tapping buttons goes on a five kill killing spree unanswered and with that the score is going to result in the 23 to 13 10 kill lead tapping button still on this killing spree still landing a phenomenal shot stop middle lanes a perfect kill on the player running up king street and now it's up to vetra to kind of finish this game off before tapping button spawns and extends his kill streak it's too late for vetra because tapping buttons is already pink two he's going to get that last kill as well 25 14 tapping buttons and vetra uh, I, that was a force and that was a push and I'm excited to see this team continue to compete in this tournament. That is one of the best single game performances we've seen from a player uh, in, in our Halo 5 tournaments. 18 kills, 4 assists, 8 deaths. Vetra backing up with 7 kills, 7 assists himself and 6 deaths. Just... You know, things were very close the first 10 to 15 kills of the game. You know, nobody was able to pull away. But as soon as tapping buttons really started to settle into this game, he absolutely took off and was able to help secure that win. Yeah, you can just tell tapping buttons was feeling himself and, and just felt so comfortable with how he was playing and, and maneuvering around the map the way he was that... I mean, he caught fire, and when a player catches fire, especially in the 2v2, it's almost impossible to stop him because you have such little resources uh, to kind of uh, deal with this player just taking control of the game and tapping buttons, showing why um, why he's such a force and why players thought that he was the next big thing coming into the HCS series uh, when he got the opportunity to team with that EG roster back in the day. And uh, the, a very... Uh, still young player in in the scene and and showing that he does have what it takes to just take over any game, uh, especially one that's as important as this losers finals is. The more I watch these guys, the more excited I get for this possible grand finals matchup. You know, we we talked about it when when I cast it with you a couple weeks ago. And we had Gold Star BR coming up from the losers bracket to face off against Bound, and I'm kind of like, "Hey, I'm excited! Like, let's see what these guys can do." And you're kind of like trying to temper my expectations there. You're like, ah, "I don't know. I think Bound and Neptune are going to be pretty, you know, pretty controlled and be able to dominate." And, and it. It's exactly what we got. It was a very clinical performance from them. And now I'm seeing tapping buttons of Vetra coming in here. And I'm like, okay, is this the team that can challenge Bound and Neptune? And with what we've seen from them so far through this loser's bracket run, that could be it. It remains to be seen. They still have to finish this loser's final and then get their shot at Bound and Neptune. But 
it's getting me a little excited. Yeah, I, I think that that's still a story to be told, right? I think it's easy yes. to have confidence uh, against players. Uh, players like Gold Star BR and whatnot, but I think Neptune and Bound are kind of on another level and to kind of win as many individual one-on-ones as Tapping Buttons just won in that past game. Uh, I don't expect to see that against uh, players of the caliber of Bound and Neptune. And when you're not winning those one-on-ones, how is your play style fit in? Uh, that's something that we have to wait and see. And and potentially, maybe he is going to. But that's a story that's down the road, and they have to win this series in order to try and even get to that task. Uh, but game one, game two, going to start off pretty well for them. Uh, up 2-0 already. They win the battle for Overshield. It does get burned, it looks like. But uh, two kills go in their favor, so that's a successful recipe. Uh, they do spot the sniper in Al Bane and they take him out. The sniper's going to go behind the truck. I'm not sure if the player's going to be able to pick it up. Yes, Tyranny he's able to pick that up off the ground. And now a 3 2 lead, but Tyranny does have to snipe, so I'm looking forward to seeing if he's able to kind of make a play and, and answer the ring of the bell that veteran tapping button just gave him the game one. Two leads so far for tapping buttons and Vetra. We are on Plaza once more, so what we don't see on Truth with the power weapons and the overshield is now at play here in this second game. And the sniper is controlled by tapping buttons. Let's see what he can do with this big changeover to his POV now. He's trying to get the flank and gets in behind Tierney, able to finish off that kill. Now, looking for Alvin. That's another, the double kill quickly for tapping buttons, and that's a 7 to 2 lead. Yeah. Um, Tyranny not able to do anything with that snipe immediately goes down and it gets in the hands of tapping buttons and because of that they're going to result in about four or five straight kills, six straight kills, killing spree for tapping buttons and nine to two. Game two looking just like game one did halfway through. Um, and if, for those of you that thought this was a close, going to be a close series, I'm sorry, but it does not look like tapping buttons and Vetra have any intention on making this game close and making it a difficult series for themselves. They're going to take over game two at the start, 10 to 2. Uh, this overshot is going to be coming up in 15 seconds. And if you're rooting for Tyranny and Outpay to try and come back in this series, you better hope they get this overkill. Oh. But tapping buttons has something to say about it. Oh, oh, oh. So clinical with the sniper there. Tapping buttons. Um, maybe looking to top the performance we saw from him last game. He's already got eight kills to his name. Looking very clean with the sniper so far. Uh, Kathy asking in Twitch chat, did you see that? Yeah, barely. Barely. There wasn't a whole lot of time to see it, but it was there. Uh, and very, very clean right now. Vetra does go down. It's an 11-4 lead, but... Buttons look for a little something here, seeing if he can hunt down a straggler here on the red team. Yeah, it does look like Tyranny was able to pick up that overshield. And uh, it's just what kind of damage is he able to do with it? Because we're going to see him pushing tapping buttons right now. Tapping buttons finally out of snipe ammo. Uh, the damage has been done a little bit, and the new snipe is coming up in 10 seconds. So we're looking at Tyranny and Outbait Lake. We got to get over to this snipe and make sure tapping doesn't get another one because it was. Too difficult to try and take him out the first time, considering he's still holding on to it. Uh, and that new snipe is going to be up, and Outbait is going to go down. So this is going to result in tapping buttons, picking up that new snipe. And now he's got a not another opportunity to get a power weapon and go off with it, similar to the first one. And this is uh, this is a very dangerous spot for a red team to be in, right? They oh. Tapping buttons, beautiful shots onto the first player. Pulls up the snipe, and lands a nice no-scope body right there and a major double kill to extend the lead to nine. And that's the kind of damage that Tapping is going to do with the Snipe. He's on a killing frenzy right now as he takes off the spawner, spawning it blue. And beautiful rotation from Tapping right there to understand the exact situation of where the red team is going to spawn. Uh, he knows that there's a player over by loot, but this player has already kind of stuck below him. Does miss a couple of nose goes by the grace of God if you're an Outvade fan. Uh, but for how long will Outvade be able to kind of hide in this corner, in this loop, it doesn't look like it's going to be long. Petra decides to push him, gets a nice melee that allows Tapping Button to continue his killing frenzy, and now Tapping looking to go on a running ride. 13 kills for this man. He is playing out of his mind right now. Looking for the no scope there. He is finally going to get taken down. Tyranny able to uh, slow down the absolute freight train that has been tapping buttons in this series and specifically this game. It's an 18 to 8 lead here. 13 2 and 2 is the scoreline for tapping buttons. And he's looking for more. He's not done yet, folks. 
No, I don't think he has any intentions of being done, especially not before this series is over. It's 18 to 8, and this is just as bad of a game as game one was, right? Ooh. If you're if you're a red team fan, he does spot both players. <laughs> On the foot, it's not the overshield. Vets are doing a phenomenal job of figuring out a way to trade right there. And even though Red Team was able to pick up the overshield, they go one for two in that situation, and the lead continues to grow. So even when you had an overshield, uh, you were unable to cut into the deficit and tapping and tapping and Vets are doing a phenomenal job of just collapsing on a tyranny as well, continuing to build this lead. And this is all but over. This is all she wrote. I'm calling it 22 to 9. Tapping buttons and Betra playing so fast. Uh, looking forward to the finals and already uh, just thrust sliding their way to it. Man, I, I love the, the kind of the cheese from tapping buttons to try and chase the double melee kills. It doesn't work out, but he's still feeling very confident right there. Make it his 16th kill of the game, taking out Outdate. Just one more kill, separating them from a spot in our grand finals for tonight's bracket. Found in Neptune, waiting and watching. Tapping buttons will go down once more jet. there to Tyranny. Sniper rifle spawning in 10 seconds. Will we get to see one last snipe to finish it off with tapping buttons? Nope. Petra is going to take out Tyranny. That's a 25 to 10 win. And the blue team will move on to Grants. Yeah, I wasn't sure how that series was going to go, but very quickly did we learn that Vetra and Tapping Buttons knew how that series was going to go. Um, that's a very dominant performance, and I'm looking forward to seeing the finals because Neptune and Bound are going to be uh, a completely different beast than Tyranny and Outmade. But with Tapping Buttons and Vetra playing that well, if they can consistently can play at that pace, they're going to give Neptune and Bound some trouble. But how much trouble we are going to have to wait and see. Yeah, it's, it really looked, you know, similar to the kind of dominance that we saw t uh, Bound and Neptune have against Tyranny and Outfit. So that's the one thing that kind of makes me confident that, you know, they both had similarly strong performances again this, the, against a similar opponent. But you can never predict how that translates directly into a head-to-head -head matchup. So, you know, I think it's easy to say that Bound and Neptune still the favorites, but... I'm feeling more confident now in the challenger than I was a couple of weeks ago. And you know what, regardless of the result, I'm excited. I think it still promises to be a very fun series when we return. So we're going to go to a short break folks. When we come back, I've got one more G fuel giveaway for you guys as well as grand finals. So don't go anywhere. Esports arena. We'll be back in a few.
All right, folks, we are back. Yeso and Clutch ready to bring you the grand finals for this Sunday, May 31st in our Halo 5 tournament. A match between Bound and Neptune going up against Tapping Buttons and Vetra as we get ready to get things going. It looks like Truth will be the first match up, and it's going to be a tough test here, but Tapping Buttons and Vetra have shown themselves uh, the last team alive, and they will get their shot at Bound and Neptune. Yeah, they're going to get a shot, but I'm not sure how well of a shot they're going to be able to take. Uh, Bound and Neptune have shown just about no weaknesses so far through this tournament uh, in a redemption tour from last weekend. And uh, I think that they only have uh, first place on their minds. And we've seen a lot of good things out of Tapping Buttons and Vetra, but this is going to be the true test before them uh, going against the likes of Bound and Neptune. And, and what kind of... Uh, what kind of a task it's going to be. I think that, like, yeah, we just saw Tapping and Vetra really run through a couple of teams uh, that we thought were going to be more competition. So Tapping and Vetra have played very well coming into this series. But like I said, this is kind of a whole different beast when, when going against Bound and Neptune. And Bound and Neptune played a completely different pace in the last few teams that they've had the chance to play. So it'll be super interesting to see how they deal with that pace early on. Definitely we'll have to see if Vetra and Tapping Buttons can get some early momentum going because we know how it goes with Bound and Neptune, right? You may be able to keep him close at the start, but they're going to start to run away with it, uh, you know, after they really get settled in the game. And then their second game is typically even better than the first. So it's really going to be on Tapping Buttons and Vetra to have a very strong start and then not fall off in that kind of those middle four minutes there where Bound and Neptune really start to hit their stride. We'll see if they're able to do it as we are loading in, starting again on Truth here. Getting ready to go. Yeah, and I'm super interested to see how the start of this game goes. Like I said, um, will the pace that Bound and Neptune uh, play at throw, throw Vetra and tapping off, or are they going to be able to handle it uh, and, and play at that similar pace? Um, it does look like flying top middle is going to be a nice start to try and deal with the pace, but Bound picking up a huge double kill to start the game off uh, is exactly what I feared for tapping buttons and Vetra. And as we continue this game, it's only map control right now. For Bound and Neptune, that's going to give them the advantage. Uh, no power weapons or power ups for, for Bound and Neptune to get at the start of Truth, but this map control may be just enough to kind of give them the advantages they need to, to extend this lead. It is only two kills, but still definitely uh, the least ideal start you can have to a game. But Neptune was taken down there by Vetra, and Vetra actually able to get another there as Bound gets beat down by the blue team player and the score evened up at two tapping buttons and vetra punching back here now let's see if they can build a lead yeah and, and a great response by vetra right there to make sure that this game doesn't get out of control quickly right you need that double kill out of him in order to to keep the momentum on your side that you just built through really just bracket and, and he answers uh, with those two massive kills, and now he's in a little bit of control. Does get a player to no show on the pink, is able to finish off bound, and now the lead has changed. Tapping buttons and Vetra picking up the lead three to two, and it's flat Neptune and pink. He gets Neptune weak, and he's going to play his life and expects tapping buttons to try and find Neptune pink to finish him off. But bound coming off spawn is going to take Vetra out, and it looks like Neptune stayed alive throughout all of the chaos, and they pick up two kills themselves. Down in Neptune take the lead right back yeah they're not gonna let him get moving and neptune just does not miss their finishing off vetra bound gets the kill on to tapping buttons we'll take a look at his pov here as bound has looked very very strong in the early going six to three lead for his team he's got four kills to his name and tapping buttons able to slow him down for the moment and grabs a kill actually able to take out neptune as well so these are the kind of responses we need to see from the blue team you're not going to be able to stop bound and neptune every time they're going to get those two two for one two for zero trades what you need to be able to do is you need to be able to respond and that's what tapping buttons and vetra are doing right now keeping things close yeah keeping it close and tying it up with great teamwork on the kill thing too right there from tapping and vetra and now they have their mind focus on bound but bound's going to be able to take vetra off 
But Tevin Bun's doing a great job of, of immediately shifting his gears and focus onto on the bound, and he's able to trade that out as well. So phenomenal job by both teams training each other. Skills out so far. Metron gonna get caught out time middle and Vetra coming off spawn's gonna be able to land two grenades time middle and finish that kill and take the lead with it. <clears throat> Alright, so Veteran tapping buttons have been able to do what many other teams uh, have been able to do. They've had a solid early game, kept things close. Now the deciding point is now. The next three to five minutes will decide where this match goes. And if they cannot let Bound and Neptune start to run away as they have settled into this match, it will bode very well. But that is two kills there for Bound. It's the 10 to 8 lead. Bound losing his shields, but not going down. He's able to buy enough time and escape the tapping buttons. Ooh, good grenade there, though, from tapping buttons. Yeah, and it's a two-kill lead, and like you said, they've done a great job so far to keep this game close. And that's what you really want to focus on, but it's all, it only... It, you continuously have to play at this, like, perfection level to keep this game close, right? Like, any errors are going to result in major mistakes being made. Tapping buttons catching bound off guard right there, continuing to make this just a two-kill game is a phenomenal way of keeping this close, but... It's going to have to continue at this pace the entire game for them to, to have a chance in this game. Um, so there's no room for error, really. You have to almost play perfect Halo in order to kind of uh, create this upset. And it looks like tapping buttons and Vetra have been up to the task so far, and we're almost halfway through. But any error that they make could be capitalized on at any point. Bound trying to chase down. It's a three kill lead for him and his teammate as Neptune's gonna go down. Tapping button's not gonna be able to escape there from Bound. That's a kill there for the leader of this red team. Eight kills for him, three assists as well. 14 to 11 is the score. Let's hop on board with Vetra now. He's trying to hunt down his next kill. He and tapping buttons, they need to get things going. Can't let this lead grow any further. He's yeah. gonna be patient here. Waiting to see if somebody walks up top. I really like this play by Vetra. Trying to slow it down. It doesn't look like Neptune and Bound know where Vetra is, but they do have, they have to be suspicious of something because the map is so quiet right now. And they're searching high and low. They do find tapping. Oh, yeah. Vetra is actually across the map. And that's kind of like poor positioning the style for a 2v2 from Vetra and having buttons. Yeah, you tried to play it slow, but because you were so separated, once you got into trouble, you weren't able to help your teammate. And tapping goes down again, and Vetra's still not being involved in any of the combat that's gone down in the past minute has resulted in two more kills going away of Neptune and Bound. And because of that, the kill lead is up to four. Vetra finally getting into a, some combat is able to take down the kill. So when he's in combat, it's great, but the style that they were just trying to play by slowing it down and separating each other, each other from themselves um, kind of got a little sloppy and worked against them in that manner. Uh, luckily for them, they are able to kind of regroup and get two straight kills and, and narrow this lead down to three. But you want to see them play together a little bit more and not give up those two kills because they're going to matter at the end of the scoreline. Tapping buttons going down again. Vetra not quick enough to get there and respond. And that means a four kill lead here. Vetra trying to play patiently, waiting for tapping buttons to come back up. There needs to be more coordination from these blue teammates. Neptune taking a lot of damage. Vetra able to take him down. Good job with the headshot there to finish it off. He's going to wait for his shields to respawn. And now him and tapping buttons can maybe look for a play on bound. Bound breaks the shields very quickly of Vetra and is able to take down tapping buttons with the perfect kill. And now Vetra's in trouble. Yeah, Vetra doing a great job of staying alive, but Bound does not care at all because he's able to not only knock Vetra to no shield, but perfect kill tapping buttons and immediately land a nice nade onto Vetra and kill tapping buttons off the respawn. Bound picking up three straight kills. Could have been four if Vetra didn't play his life as well as he did earlier, but the lead is up to six, and you kind of felt like there was always this tension teetering. Uh, of when Bound and Neptune are going to run away with this game. It looks like Bound and Neptune have picked up the the three, four straight kills in order to extend this week to seven now, and, and it looks like Vetra and, and Tapping are going to be forced to go on a spree themselves in order to turn this around. Yep, on board with Neptune right now. Ten kills to his name, just behind the 11 of Bound as they're looking to close out game one of the grand finals here, seven and a half minutes in. 21 to 15 right now. Plasma grenades up to the center of the map here. And 
Tetris gonna just try and be patient. He wants to buy some time, but he and Tapping Buttons are separated into two different 1v1s. Here is Bound firing away against Tapping Buttons. Veteran Bound will trade back and forth. It's a one for one. Yeah, and one for one is a win if you're Neptune and Bound, right? You need three more kills to close this game out. The other team needs uh, eight or seven, I'm sorry. And unfortunately, like, they're gonna have to make up ground somewhere, so trading right now is bad if you're tapping buttons in Petro. So you wanna minimize the amount of damage that Bound and Neptune are able to do in order to stop trading from happening. Tapping buttons doing a great job of making something oh. difficult to kill, but Bound being there to help Neptune route. And that's the teamwork that we consistently see between these two that make them such a terrifying 2v2 team to play against, right? It's that teamwork that seems like it's so consistent. Like, not only are they individually skilled, like, uh, monsters, but when it comes down to it, their teamwork and their positioning is always there to help each other out. Tapping buttons, once again, is able to win a one-on-one, -on -one, but found their perfect position to finish off the kill and end the game one to zero. We see Bound and Neptune take game one pretty, uh, pretty easily, I'll say. I mean, the game was close up until about the halfway mark, and then we saw just a six, seven spree out of Bound and Neptune kind of run away with it. And... And that's what you fear, like, no matter how well Tapping and Vetra feel like they played throughout that game one, like, there was just a minute and a half, two minute gap where they allowed Bound and Neptune to to display some dominance, and because of it, the score resulted in almost a lopsided victory in their favor. It, and it's crazy because with some players, right, you can watch them and, you know, sometimes, you know, they can win like that, that, you know, 70 30 matchup, right? Where they've got like a 30% chance to win this fight. It's heavily in the favor of the other, but sometimes, it, sometimes they can turn it around. And it feels like with Bound and Neptune, no matter what happens, it feels like every time it, you, they don't have anything worse than a 50% chance to win a fight. It could be a 1v2. And I look at a 1v2 for like for Bound and I go, yeah, there's still probably a good chance like he can take two kills here. It's crazy how skilled they are, how they just take advantage of every little mistake you make, and they don't miss shots that you cannot. There's so little margin for error, uh, and every little mistake you make is just exacerbated by how cleanly and clinically these two guys play. It takes me back to something that uh, my a teammate of mine, Cloud, used to say whenever I when I first joined Bleed the Hype, and. Uh, it kind of like changed my mindset for how I viewed like my own gameplay at tournaments or competing in Halo against some of the best. It was like, if you're not playing great, you shouldn't win. Like, you can't play good and expect to win. You have to play great. And that's kind of the mindset that veterans that have to be in and playing against the likes of Bounty. You have to play great if you want to win. You can't just play good and expect it. Um, and, and, that those kind of words might seem pretty simple, but like they speak volumes because so often did I look at a series and be like, I thought I played good, um, and and ended up losing the series. It was like the series that you play great in that you make the upsets on, on the teams that you are viewed as like an underdog, in, right? If you're an underdog, like you really do have to play great in order to create that upset. So tapping buttons and Betro, you need to play great here in game two to take this to a game three. Definitely going to need to see a huge performance out of them here on Plaza. The first battle for the Overshield went in favor of Bound and Neptune as they were able to get a couple of kills, but it's been a good response from tapping buttons and Vetra. They were actually able to kill Bound despite having control of the Sniper. They grab it themselves and now they're up 4 to 2. Can they build some momentum here as they've gotten it going on Plaza? Yeah, I mean, this is a great position for them to be in, right? They have snipe, they have the light rifle, they have control yard and, and an idea of where Bound and Neptune are going to be coming from. Um, they just need to be able to hit their shots, and Vetra pressing the attack on uh, Neptune right there. You think he's going to come away with a kill, but Neptune with a phenomenal nade is able to win that one-on-one -on -one and, and, and trade out kills. Great job by tapping buttons to kind of finish off the kill there and, and extend this lead five to three and, and run away with the snipe and play his life because that would have been really poor if Vetra dies right there with no position for tapping to kind of come away with the trade. On board with tapping buttons right now. Two more shots on this sniper rifle. Let's see if he can do anything with it as his teammate 
goes down, but is able to trade one for one. That's a kill for Neptune there. Looking for the second shot with the sniper, it will miss. He did secure the kill onto Neptune, so the lead stays at seven to four. And now Vetra going for the aggressive push. They're able to take down Bound. Good shot. Now they're looking for the Neptune in the 2v1. Can they get over here? Tapping Buttons dropping to the low ground. Looking to get the flank. Neptune's going to go down, and that's another kill for Tapping Buttons. Yeah, Tapping Buttons on a killing spree. He's on a 6 spree right now, 9-4 to four with the lead, and he's starting to play great, and that's what it's going to take, right? That's the exact thing that I was trying to talk about before the game started. Uh... Is he really does need to play great, and a great game he started off having. 10-5 to 5 is the lead. They've been in control of the power-ups, and the power weapons is the recipe for success if you're tapping by the Petra. But the game's not over yet. It's just a four-kill lead. There's a new sign coming out, and you have to maintain focus throughout the entire game. And unfortunately, a little bit of a lapse in judgment right there from tapping, kind of running out before Petra is able to get off spawn, and he runs into a Neptune that's going to have landed some great shots on the top of the hill there. And, and they and close this gap to just now Vetra with a good kill, able to get the grenade on to Bound. They are in the double digit territory now, 11 to 7. They're trying to collapse onto Neptune here, and can they secure the kill? Neptune's gonna run away, still has the sniper available, and they able to get the kill on to Vetra there, tapping buttons soon to follow, and now it's 11 to 9, the gap shortened to 2. Yeah, shortened to two, and Neptune has his sights on the veteran, does land a body shot, and Bound's able to finish that kill. Now, it's a one-kill game, so as strong of a start as Tapping Buttons just had, it's a one-kill game. Neptune has kind of been able to weather the storm that Tapping threw at him, and kind of been able to throw his own punches here with a nice headshot on the veteran. Tied ball game. Neptune starting to pick it up and make sure that this does not get an extended series. Bound does go down from Tapping, but... I mean, this next overshield is utterly important if you're tapping a veteran. You need to get control of it because Neptune with the snipe has done so much damage and you can't continue that path. Neptune here, four more shots on the sniper. Looking for tapping buttons here. Look for the nose He's going to miss. The second one's going to land though. Can he finish the kill? There's the shots coming out. Neptune takes that one out. Vetra falling as well. And it's 13 to 12, the lead now for Bound and Neptune. And Neptune with the headshot takes out tapping buttons. I mean, the best of the best of the pros will tell you how individually skilled Neptune is. And we're just getting a little bit of a display of what that skill really looks like here today. And no matter who his opponents are, they compliment this kid and how talented he is and how big of an up-and-comer he is. And he's just displaying that individual skill on to the extent of veteran tapping buttons hopes of winning this tournament today because tapping goes down. And yes, Neptune does go down, but Bound's able to trade a kill out and continue this three kill lead and tapping buttons and vetra you had the hottest start you could have hoped for but your lead is gone and with it is your hopes to win this tournament 17 to 13 everything seems like it's starting to snowball against them right now they're starting to lose their one-on-ones the great halo that they started off playing has not resulted in an entire game of great halo it was just a few spawns and now you're, you're finding out a way to, to try and counter Neptune and Bound playing with a lead, which you haven't been able to do all series. This is a, a moment of of need from Tapping Buttons and Vetra right now. Someone's got to step up and make a play. And it looks like Vetra is able to pick up a kill on the Bound. Is that the play that they need to open up a window for them to find some aggression and some map control? Sniper rifle spawning in 10 seconds. Neptune has control of the area. Will they be able to secure it as the team trying to threaten a little bit? Three kill lead remains for the red side as Neptune and Bound just seven kills away from securing another first place finish in our Halo 5 2v2 tournament. Neptune goes down, but it's again still 18 to 15. The top on board with tapping buttons. Trying to get a bit of a collapse here onto Bound. It's gonna get the kill. That's huge. Two kill gap. Good on Vetra to retreat to the safety of his teammate. Not letting uh, Neptune get that isolated 1v1. Overshield gonna be picked up by tapping buttons. He's gonna activate it. That's a huge pickup for the blue team. Yeah, absolutely. Vetra gets perfect shotted as he's going for the overshield but tapping buttons able to swoop in right over vetra's dead body and pick it up himself down three right now tapping trying to find a successful way to use this overshield to close this lead does spot a player does 
almost get assassinated there. Does a great job of thrusting backwards and making sure that that player doesn't get free damage with a melee or an assassination onto him. Uh, is trying to play his life around this pole because he knows this player has the plasma pistol, which is an easy counter for the overshield. Does maneuver away around the car, but ends oh. up losing his overshield. That was unbelievable place from Bound right there to maneuver his way around the pole, dip, dive, dodge around the pole, <laughs> uh, charge the plasma pistol three times, and eventually taking out tapping buttons. And that is a sigh of of just disdain if you're a tapping buttons fan right there because that was the moment that this game was almost decided right because that overshield could have resulted in like some momentum for tapping buttons and better but unfortunately bound was able to counter it so perfectly and and with that one kill to go 24 to 16. this could be it folks one more kill to finish it off bound trying to hunt down tapping buttons here as neptune does go down Eyes on the Vetra, Bound gonna bait out the grenade and back away. Step the class with him. Looking for the kill on the tapping buttons, but he will take him out. It's still a six kill gap, and tapping buttons and Vetra have to play perfect to bring this back. I don't think it's gonna have happen. Bound and Neptune bound their footing in the middle of this game, and they are dominating, trying to finish it off. Vetra takes out Neptune, but it doesn't matter. Bound finishes it off, takes out tapping buttons for his 12th kill of the game, and your champions once again are bound and neptune yeah great rebound tournament for them after last weekend not the performance they wanted but this weekend they play exactly how we expect them to play with pretty dominant performances in the winners finals and the finals themselves they call themselves champions without dropping a game in those series and, and making slight work of the competition there was a minute there where you thought tapping buttons and vetro were going to be able to take this to a game three but Neptune and Bound just make enough plays and can always find the room to kind of step up and, and and dictate the game how they want. And in doing so, they're going to be this week's champions of the 2v2. Big performance for them. Congratulations. Uh, I Not that I did, but I will never predict against Bound and Neptune until somebody shows me that they can beat them in a grand final because they are just too good. Uh, so congratulations. Uh, thank you to everybody who came out and played. Uh, credit where credit is due. Tapping buttons in Vetra. A very strong charge through the loser's bracket. Certainly earned their spot in this grand final and hope that they see something that they can build on, uh, especially with the performance that they had early in game two. Yeah, absolutely. I expect to see them return next week and um, hoping for a, the same strong performance from uh, buttons and Vetra. Uh, it was a pleasure to kind of see them turn it on and, and the performances that they put on through the loser's bracket was something special to remember, but there's always just that juggernaut of Neptune and Bound that you're you gotta be so frustrated if you lose them consistently, right? Like what do we what do we have to do? How well do we have to be playing in order to beat these guys? Um just continuing to practice and continuing to work on that teamwork and and making sure that you minimize the mistakes whenever it matters because it, it it almost takes perfect Halo, and like I said, you can't be playing good to beat them. You got to be playing great. Well, there you have it, folks. Let's give away one more G Fuel starter kit uh, before the end of our stream. Big shout out to them uh, as a supporter of us at Esports Arena and everything we're doing uh, with Series E. Uh, if you guys do win the giveaway, and I'm going to let uh, Mainstream Rap know because he was in here earlier, uh, I'm going to send you a code. You can go to gfuel.com and order any of their starter kits. They have about I think nine or 10 of them that you can choose from uh, order it and then just use this code during checkout. And it will mean that you get uh, the starter kit uh, for free. So that's what you have to do. Uh, just be active in chat. I'm going to give you guys about 15 seconds. If anybody wants to get in last minute, just shoot a message in chat. Give me a poggers. Give me a GG's. Uh, tell me how great of a caster clutch is. Doesn't matter to me, but get in there quick. I'm going to do this giveaway and then we will close things out uh, before I do the giveaway. Check out our social medias, guys, at Esports Arena on Twitter and Instagram, facebook.com slash Esports Arena USA, and all the information you need about Series E and everything else we're doing at esportsarena.com. If you want to sign up for any of our tournaments, matcharino.com slash ESA, or you can use the exclamation point sign up command in Twitch chat. We'll easily give you the link. Uh, Sylvanix says, Clutch is a handsome boy. I'll take there you it. Go. Uh, 
There you I go. Prefer to be called a man at, at the age of thirty, but <laughs> I'll never turn down a compliment. Again. Whatever. Well, he'll take it. He'll take it. All right, guys. Uh, thank you so much for coming to hang out. Let's roll this real fast before we close out. Right now, who do we got? Hey. It's out bay. There we go. So, hey, you don't win the bracket, but you win the giveaway. It came away with something, right? And that, good for him of uh, continuously competing in these weekend tournaments. Yeah, uh, big, big shout out to him. And continuously to grow, right? It's like from weeks one to two to three, you see him play better and better and better. And I expect to continue to see him uh, kind of develop as a player and continue his progression. Definitely high expectations there. Looking for uh, more that we can see from him in the future. So, uh, Alvid, keep an eye on your whispers in Twitch. Uh, I will shoot you the code here in just a moment. To everybody else, thank you so much uh, for joining us today. We appreciate all of your guys' support. Make sure to tune in throughout the week as we will have all different kinds of tournaments going on if you want to know what they are. Again, matcharino.com slash ESA. Before myself... For Clutch, for Kathy, and everybody at Esports Arena, I want to thank you guys so much for joining us. We'll see you again next time. The past four years at Esports Arena, we really didn't know what our identity was. We tried our pro tournaments. We tried running content pieces. We tried doing music events. We had our memberships. We realized that the community just always kept coming back for our local tournament for every Wednesday night, every Friday night, every Thursday night. So then it hit us. Series E is going to revolutionize the esports industry. You as a competitor now have consistency to come and compete. You get to keep coming back and let it count for something. That opportunity to get paid by Esports Arena, to get paid by a major brand that's helping support this league, this foundation, because so many times the dollars stop at the pro level. They stop there. They never trickle down to the guys like us, the guys that had the dreams, that wanted to make it to become a pro, but never had that opportunity because they lived in somewhere in Alaska or somewhere in Idaho. No offense, Idaho. I like you guys. You're so cool. Potatoes. But the, when you don't have that opportunity, like a guy who's from LA or a girl who's from LA or New York or these major cities that have esports tournaments that go all the time, where can you start? Where do you go? Where do you become a pro? How can you do that? How do you get paid? How do you get noticed? How do you get recognized? It doesn't exist. There's not a clear path there. It's a randomized system. You gotta be good. Don't get me wrong. You've gotta be good and you gotta compete. You gotta play. But it's hard when you got a full-time job and you got a full-time student, you got bills to pay. You can't commit yourself 100% to esports. Esports Arena wants to change that. We are gonna change that. You're gonna get $1,000 a month in pay from Esports Arena. We're gonna travel you across the country to compete against other people just like you. That's the feeling that I'm looking at that eight-year-old and I'm thinking, man, this person could become a professional gamer, but how? Now they're gonna start their path at Esports Arena and they're gonna to compete to become that next pro, to become that next influencer, to become that next superstar. They're gonna start at Esports Arena. That's what Series E is all about. Opportunity for everyone to be your first step in esports.